All right, check this out. How you think affects muscle growth. I'm not just talking about consistency and the psychology behind exercise. I mean, literally, how you think while you do a lift can change how it affects your muscles. Studies have confirmed this. In other words, if you're focusing on a particular muscle, you improve its activation. If you focus on a movement, you can lift more weight. So if you lift heavy or if you're bodybuilding and sculpting, you got to change your mindset. This well, is uh, totally overlooked. Looks so, funny. okay, <clears throat> explain that a little bit deeper. So do you mean like, um, like say I go to the gym, I'm getting ready to do squats and uh, I got in a, a fight with my wife right before I walked in there and I'm like doing rep and like I'm thinking about that stuff mm. that will negatively impact the lift like weight wise or because sometimes I feel like that contributes. Well, the, <laughs> yes. just yeah. being honest, you can either channel it or it can yeah. completely screw yeah. up. Yeah. Your so lift. So they've done studies on this where they'll have someone do a lift, and they'll have them focus on the muscle. So they'll say, "Do I'll give an example? Do a bench press, and then focus on the chest working. Focus okay. on the so chest." So you mean in particular, like what muscle I'm trying to? Well, activate. that's one. That's okay. one aspect. And so those studies will show that there's more or better activation. So this is really valuable when you're tar when you're trying to target a specific muscle group. But then also on the other side, how you think can also affect the amount of weight you can lift. So they've mm -hmm. got studies where people will go in and psych themselves up or focus on being tight or just focus on perfect movement, not necessarily focusing on a specific muscle, and then they can lift more weight. So uh, now how can you use this? Well, if you're going in and you're doing low reps and your goal is to increase the weight that you're lifting, then rather than focusing on the target muscle, like when you're squatting, like glutes, quads, hands, whatever, it's about getting tight, driving, psyching yourself up. If you're bodybuilding or body sculpting and you're doing a squat and you're like, I want my glutes to fire more, or I want to feel this more in my quads, mm -hmm. then focusing on that muscle and its actions will actually do that. So uh, how you do the lift from a mental, and if people forget this, right? That muscles are dumb. Like you take a muscle off your body, it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's the brain, it's the central nervous system that controls the muscles. So how you think while you do the lift can actually have a significant effect to the point where if you do this for years and years and years, you'll notice a difference in development and strength. Well, you know, where I really saw this was working with high school kids and um, being able to teach them how to create that kind of stability and, and to be able to generate more tension throughout their body and their muscles to be able to kind of ground themselves. It was like a totally foreign concept to a lot of the kids because they just look at the exercise and they want to like produce the exercise yeah. and just kind of get through the workouts. And, and that's just always been the intention is like, I got to get through the workouts. I'm exhausted. I sweat and I do and that. That's sort of like the end result. Uh, and to really spend that extra amount of time and like keep them in position and now to squeeze and produce force. So one thing that I did that was uh, very helpful, I, I took this from Joe DeFranco was uh, using those grip testers. Mm. And so like you'd have them come in and just to be able to focus on increasing that number was like, you have to use your entire body to be able to squeeze yes. that hard. So that was a good hack. Yeah. You know, it's another example of what you're talking about too, is, you know, have you seen these cases where somebody <clears throat> hits a PR because they actually didn't realize the weight that they put on there? There's a famous, oh, yeah. there's a famous case of that where I, I think it was an Olympic lifter broke a world record because they, they misloaded the bar and actually yeah, loaded it too much. Yeah. And that just shows you the power of the mind of like, oh yeah, I've lifted this before. Mm -hmm. So it's, so automatically you already- Try that on your buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. Surprise him one day. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to hear this episode. <laughs> Fuck their buddy up. <laughs> just change it all to kilos. Yeah, my bub said I could slide, <laughs> slide an extra 50 on there. <laughs> you would know. <laughs> you know, I've done this to myself, by the way, where I've worked out in a gym once and uh, the plates were in kilos. And, you know, you can do the math, right? One kilo is 2.2 pounds. I can so see you doing but this. But I purposefully didn't count. I just threw plates on when I felt like I could do more. And I said, I'll add it all up at the very end. Yeah. And when I added it up, I was like, oh, crap, that was a PR. I actually hit a PR. And I wonder if it would have psyched me out. I've heard, I've actually totally. heard guys say that they, that's why they prefer kilograms so they don't get so focused on the weight. Because, mm -hmm. like, doing the 2.2 math is like, I mean, if you got enough fives and tens and 25s on there, it's like, oh man, that's too difficult yeah. to do that. And I'm not really, so I'm not focused on exactly the number. So, so it's funny because the reason why I, this was, you know, how I opened is I did this today in my workout. So lately I've been doing a lot of bodybuilding where I'm like trying to, to sculpt and focus on target muscles. And today I did that. And so the goal with that is uh, to slow down the rep, 
feel, I did back today. So I'm like feeling the target muscle, feel the lat squeeze or the rhomboid squeeze or whatever part of my back I'm trying to work. And then when I hit, like, I can't do another rep, I switched my mentality. I said, let me squeeze out a few more reps with the same kind of mindset I use when I'm going heavy. And I got three more, three, four more reps. So I couldn't have done it with the other mindset of feeling the muscle. It was almost like I went to failure, but then I got psyched up and I'm like, let me see if I can get three or four more and stop trying to feel the back, just move the weight. And I was able to do it. And I was like, man, it's so crazy yeah. how just that mindset can change how the exercise feels, how what you're working gets affected. And they've, again, they've backed this up with studies. It's funny because bodybuilders and strength athletes have been talking about this for, before we had technology where we could see muscles being activated. We could see muscle fiber recruitment. Bodybuilders talked about this all the time. Arnold would say, when you're doing your curls, you know, he'd say, focus on the peak of the bicep and, and imagine the bicep growing or whatever. And it yeah. sounded hokey, but he was actually onto something. You know, he was on to, to- It's all about the squeeze and the feel and, yes. and trying to really it's enhance like coming. that process. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like coming. <laughs> it's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is. You know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. People don't know that. <laughs> you, is coming. you gotta watch Pumping Iron. Uh, Do you guys, how old were you when you first watched Pumping Iron? You know, that's a good question. I wonder when I, you know, I probably got introduced to it actually not till later because I didn't get into lifting until. <clears throat> so you're probably in your 20s? No, no, no. I, probably 15, 16. Okay. Yeah, because I, we started, I, like, I didn't get into like really like lifting until like 18, 19, but I was working out at my buddy's garage. You know, we, he had a, my, one of my good friends had a garage. His dad had a garage gym. And of course, when we all started getting girlfriends and, and, you know, that became like the main, like, I think at one point, you know, or I think it's common that you like all of a sudden, like focus becomes girls, you know, you do mm, everything yeah. for the attention of girls. And it never changes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and I think that was right around like 15. And so I think that even though we weren't new any, we had no idea what we were doing. The fact that his dad had that in the garage, we're in there getting arm pumps, you know, we we're doing a lot of tricep push downs yeah. and barbell curls and I, stuff. So I watched, I, think I watched I was, it then. I think, I think I was 14 <laughs> when I first watched it. Cause oh, I started, okay. So it's around the same time. Not this. Yeah. So I started lifting about 14, like seriously. And I was, I read away right fell in love with it and my right cousin during and I, your sexual imprint kind of time frame <laughs> yeah, right right, in that. <laughs> right then that explains yeah, so yes. now i cannot that do concentration sense. curls without <laughs> no so my, my cousin and i we were already fans of arnold because remember this was like you know late 80s early 90s and arnold was like the action star or whatever he was like the buff this you know guy and you know we're all into like trying to get you know strong or whatever so <clears throat> we got i bought first i got the encyclopedia bodybuilding and then I figured out that there was pumping iron. So I, my dad went to the, at the time it was photo drive up, 24 hour photo drive was the name of it. This is where you could develop photos, but also rent movies. This is how it was back before even Blockbuster. And we saw pumping iron <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I got to watch this. We got to watch this. And I remember putting it on. I had no idea what to expect. Now remember I'm 14 years old. And so my exposure to some of the stuff was really minimal. And I remember watching that and Arnold talking about how, you know, you, you know, when I get a pump, it's like having sex with the woman and coming. And I remember as a kid being like, what? Like, what is he talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? And I'm like, did he just say what I thought he said? Yeah. And I was disappointed. I was actually disappointed as a kid. I was like, why would he say that? That's so stupid. You know? <laughs> coming. What the hell is he talking about? Like, so dumb. Then I got older and I was like, oh, that's hilarious. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh boy, check this out. Brand new MAPS program, MAPS Anabolic Advanced. It's the 10 year anniversary of MAPS Anabolic. So we wrote a new program, MAPS Anabolic Advanced. This is the only MAPS program that utilizes volume training, failure training, weighted stretching, and deload weeks, programs it properly to maximize muscle growth, maximize strength, maximize the metabolism boosting effects of strength training. This will quickly become the most effective math program we've ever created. I'm gonna give one away for free, okay? Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this video. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If we declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section that you got free access to MAPS Anabolic Advance. Now, everybody else, this is launch week, which means it's gonna be on sale. So it's going to retail for $157, but if you sign up right now, you get it for 97 bucks, plus we'll throw in two free eBooks advanced training techniques, and the carb cycling diet. Okay, so you'll get that all for free. All you got to do is go to uh, anabolicadvanced.com, use the coupon code AA60 to get the $60 off plus the two free eBooks. All right, here comes the show. You know, I'm going to say something that I think is a little bit controversial and I want to hear your opinion on it because you're such a fan and you, and you, and you followed this stuff. 
I don't think that, and when we, when you think, when we talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger, everybody, um, you know, he's just the, obviously the most famous bodybuilder of all time. Yeah. I don't think he had one of the greatest physiques of all time. Mm, wow. I, I don't even think that. I'm going to go get a drink of water. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I think Serge Nebray had a better physique even in pumping iron. Oh. I, I just, and that, by the way, that is not to take away from his mass, his size, his unbelievable chest and arms. The guy had an incredible physique, so we're, we're obviously yeah. splitting hair, hairs by critiquing his physique. But I really believe that it's, it was his personality. I mean, he was such a character. Totally. Like you, yeah. uh, you just, you had to like the him. most memorable. One, oh my sure. god! Like I mean, yeah. what, what, that, that's what pumping iron did for me was I, I fell in love with his personality. Like he was hilarious. You right? also have to. He was a and very smart, super charismatic. Yeah. Uh, he was a he was a millionaire before <clears throat> he became an actor, um, and it wasn't through bodybuilding. He had businesses. I mean, he literally is the epitome of the American dream, right? He's a foreigner that comes to this country, uh, becomes the top bodybuilder in the world becomes a millionaire through business, decides he wants to be a Hollywood actor with a crazy, ridiculous long last name that nobody yeah. can pronounce. Can't speak awesome English. Awesome accent. Yeah. Can't speak English uh, without an accent. Everybody thinks he's make, <clears throat> makes fun of him, says you're going to be an actor. Mm -hmm. Does it, becomes the highest paid actor, then says I'm going to become the governor of the most populated state in California as a Republican. Yeah. yeah. And he does it. <clears throat> but all that aside, when it comes to his physique, Bodybuilding ha has changed. Not a changed. big fan of his COVID stances, by the way. Uh, I yeah, well, throw shade. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, I'll throw plenty nobody's of shade perfect. Over that. <laughs> you but had to go there. Yeah, he got stupid with that, didn't he? <laughs> you had to um, go there. As uh, uh, bodybuilding's ideals changed through the decades, and the ideals for bodybuilding in that era was Arnold's type of physique. So it was okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree. So Serge Nabray, Nabray looks more like the ideals that you would think for like. Bodybuilding later. Okay, so what I'm what I'm going to challenge on that because I disagree, and what I what, why I disagree with that is that because it, this is how it is today. Okay, so it's and it's 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 been this way, and I think Arnold was the beginning of this. When and I know that, uh, this will probably upset a lot of people that compete right now, but the, here's the truth: like that, it's dominated by the people that put on those shows and sponsor that put big money behind it, which is most of your supplement brands, which are massive marketing machines. Well, back then it was all weeder and it, all well, the, the, but, the magazines. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he dominated, but he what, it. but what they look for is somebody who is marketable. Of course. And, and yeah, you need to have a great physique to even to get on stage. Okay. At these, at the highest level, hundred percent, everybody has to be badass. And because the sport is so subjective, it's really easy to be like, it's like the argument we were talking about with the refs where it's like, you know, you could easily call it this way or that way. Right. It's really easy to say like, Oh, he does. Or he like, what really makes the decision is that personality, no, that right. look that you have. And if you are more marketable yeah. and you see it today in, in men's physique and bodybuilding, if you've got a, which is why there was this, you know, you started to see this movement in the men's physique space. Like if you had a big following on social media, you, you got yeah, place tire. You got How, place tire. Right. Like what, what would you say the percentage of that is in consideration for the judges when they're like kind of, you know, pitting the two together, like towards the end, like, and one has a bit higher of a reach or is more marketable in terms of being well, more So that's, okay, or that's, and you, I think the way you set the table for that is a perfect way it happens. Do I think that they're going to put somebody up there that has got a terrible physique just because he's popular? No. No, it's still going to be close. But I think that it's going to come down to the top three to five. And if you got five bodies that all look amazing, that you could easily argue, oh, his back was a little better than his. That's why he won't. You can make yeah. that. If you can make that argument, yep. that's enough to then let it be swayed by that's the look we're looking 100%. for. Look. I wanted, I want, I was looking for a blonde haired, blue eyed guy, or oh, I wanted someone that was a little edgy looking with some tattoos. Like if you have a vision of what you were looking for and you know, that these guys that are sponsoring these things that are putting millions of dollars in these these uh, events are in the ears of the judges and are talking to them about, hey, this is the guy we like, and letting them know. And they don't even have to do for that. For sure. They don't even have to do that. It doesn't even have to be that planned. I you think, just know. Yeah, because your stage presence, Arnold used to talk about this all the time. He would psych people out, or he would appear to be more confident yeah. on stage. And when it's close like that, the judges are more likely to pick you know, this guy over that guy. But that's not even the controversial Olympia. So that Olympia, there's no controversy. Most people would say that it was judged properly. The controversy would have been Lou, Lou versus Serge because Lou got third or no, Lou got, I think he got third and Serge got second. The controversy was the 1980 Mr. Olympia. So Arnold wins a bunch in a row. I think he won six in a row. Then he leaves, says he's going to retire. Yeah. Then he comes back in 1980 
and says, I'm going to make a comeback. Comes back with a smaller, less impressive physique. Meanwhile, all the other bodybuilders had had gotten much better. Arnold wins, and it's the it's still to this day one of the most controversial uh, Mr. Olympias of all time. Yeah, you, I mean, know, if you look you, at the pictures. You got to know that Weeder gave it to him because yeah. of who he was. Yes, yeah. and that was right when Arnold was starting to like make a name for himself. So that one was the the most controversial. But I mean, I think we see this in sports all the time. Like yeah. there's, I mean, even in like uh, like we just saw the Super Bowl. Like there is a huge interest in specific teams making it. Mm-hmm. You if you have two like uh, out of market teams like Oklahoma or yeah. something like like a, a, a from a state and a small town like there's not a big following. You want the big. You want the bit. You want the Dallas Cowboys in yeah. there. You want these teams that have yeah. massive following because it's way more revenue for them. So. Very much, you cannot think that these things aren't swayed that way because you know that it's, yeah, it's going to be- TV contracts yeah, and everything dude. else. Come on, you got to play a factor. Yeah, so. man. I would have hated to compete against uh, someone like like him because he's just so, uh, <clears throat> God, his charisma and his ability to do whatever the hell he says he's going to do. Yeah. I'll tell you this right now. Had, if he were a natural born citizen, he would, he would 100% been president. 100%. Oh, no doubt in my mind. Sure. No doubt in my mind. Well, that's that he why. Won that's why I think the Rock will be in yeah. our in our generation. Just Ventura, the, not you know. Then, <laughs> he went a little off the rails. I, I I think the Rock has been setting the table for that for quite some time now, and we will see that in the next you know twelve years or so. Yeah, he's got a chance. You yeah. think the Rock will do it? I, I do. do especially, you really, would he really want it? That's crazy. To I don't want, want it. For, yeah. I mean, I don't want that. But I mean, he. I mean, I think he does. I mean, I feel like that he's already setting the table for. That I stuff. think if you yeah. want, I think if you want to be president, you're already in a category of people that probably shouldn't be president. Personally, a hundred percent. Of course, you, you know, if you want that that bad, the best to the go be- through all that shit. You got there's like you the best people to lead be, are the people that don't want it. That's yeah. the way you know. That's the way that government was originally designed in this country. It was originally designed that that you already had a job, you worked, you had a life, and then part time. Isn't, that, you isn't that George Washington story? Isn't that his story? George. Well, George Washington, they wanted to make him king. All the people that followed oh, him said, yeah, "Let's make you king." Reluctant, and he to said, "No, take it. no, right. I'm not going to do that." Uh, but now it's like a it's a full time job. You know, people in Congress make like 200 grand a year, which isn't a ton, and yet they're millionaires. How the hell do they become millionaires? How the hell are <laughs> well, you a millionaire? We, all we got to do is follow the stock trade. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, how did this uh, uh, How did this happen? Was it true that uh, George Washington was like 6'2", or like he was like a really like tall guy? Oh, he oh, was? Wow. Yeah, I like I, I read was. that somewhere, and I didn't know for sure. Like, if you fact check me on that, like... Oh, he's six foot. Okay, which so was probably really tall back then. then they exaggerate yeah. a bit. Uh, well, well, back then, I mean, the the, the nutrient he's, he's huge were for so them. high. Yeah. yeah, that was like six five. You oh, know? That's a big. That's a big guy, though. Yeah. I had, mean, who? What? Who's? Who has been our biggest? Was it Abraham Lincoln our biggest president? The tallest. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. I know was, the heaviest was, was Taft. Tall. I think the heaviest was Taft. Lincoln was, was six four. Who? Oh, oh yeah, Lincoln was six four. Yeah. And he, and was, he, was, he was a bare knuckle fighter too, right? Was Not he? bare knuckle. No. He was a catch wrestler. Oh, and he would kick the shit out of dudes. Apparently, he yeah. was a badass. Oh, and six four. You know, there was a story of Abraham Lincoln. I guess there was like that's right. There was like four dudes on a riverboat that were. I don't know what the story was. They were harassing someone or whatever, and he got on the boat and threw all four of them off the boat into the river. <laughs> Maybe you can look that up, Andrew. That's a uh, that's dope. Yeah, what yeah, happened? So, yeah, we used to have some like presidents that could throw down oh yeah. bro teddy roosevelt, roosevelt. Could, you, could you imagine Out trump fighting or biden fighting somebody Dude, oh my nobody God. nobody compares he, he, he fight. to nobody, nobody compares to teddy roosevelt yeah. no one this guy i feel like i feel like uh obama would have a little bit of the um <laughs> probably really teddy roosevelt would no, 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 no. Okay, la, la, i'm talking about la, like the, no you're going way back i'm talking like in the last like the last five presidents like who who's like out of the last five presidents i think obama wins the fight in a fight? Yeah, in a fight. Oh, no, bro. You ever watch him ride a bike with his helmet? Bill Clinton. <laughs> t- <laughs> <laughs> He's a dork. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Good to see I mean, it, it, it ain't. <laughs> Bill, Bill no, Clinton. It definitely be, ain't be Biden. Ray, it ain't Trump. Reagan would have yeah. kicked the shit out of him. Reagan okay. was a, was a I think, college five, football player. That's not five player. presidents back, but okay. Is it? No. 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 You no. got the Bushes, and then you got you got yeah. Obama, you have Trump, you have Biden, so that's more than... But yeah. I'll, I mean, I'll give you that. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Maybe Bush, because he's like country strong, like yeah. senior. Maybe Bush senior would have been like a... He seems bro, like bro, he... Bush Jr. Jr. looks like a little athlete, though. Like, I don't know. He was, wasn't yeah. he, in, co- in college? Oh, bro, in college... He's like he was, a frat boy, in wasn't co- he? In college, yeah, he, he was doing cocaine and... <laughs> and 
Cake getting, stands. That's right. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna put my money on on Bush. Oh, yeah. he's such yeah. a <laughs> he's not yeah. He's favorite. a wild card, right? So yeah. I would do that too. So you yeah. you, you kind of want to back the guy but, that you Ro don't know. But Roosevelt, if you read about him, he he went and wanted to fight in in a war against their orders. Took a bunch of men and went to the front lines to go fight. The guy used to go out. That's at pretty night. gangster. He used to go out at night. And fight crime. This is what Batman was based yeah. off of, apparently. Is that true? I've heard that. Is that is that who it, it, Batman's loosely, based yeah. on? Yeah, loosely based. It loosely off based of off of him. Hmm. He was a judo. I think he learned judo from a, a Japanese instructor. Learned how to box. Worked out. He was a sickly kid who then built up his body and his oh. got shot. Wasn't he the one that got shot? Finished his speech. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> After a, he got shot, that'd be gangster. I think so. Get Look that up, Andrew. Yeah. What um, happened to our presidents, man? I they know got, that's what I'm saying. They used to be tough. Now you got Biden yeah. walking. He looks like like he like, step step. You're did you just watch the last one where he's walking. Take another step. He has like a different step. gait every time I see him. Like, CGI the is car. him. Yeah. So yeah. Fake Roosevelt puppet. Stuff. Huh? So Roosevelt was the original inspiration for Batman, and he did get shot. Spoke for 84 minutes before completing his speech and accepting medical attention. What? <laughs> what a savage, wow. dude! Wow. Why is that not a movie? That should be like a movie. It should be. Bro. Yeah, the real Batman. There was a documentary on Roosevelt. Why it's isn't the, there? A, that's the, a, that would make a good movie. No. What, what do they call? What was his, him and his 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 crew that went to fight in a war? Was it the Roughnecks? I think they were called. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could look that up on horseback. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, on horseback. Roughnecks. Cowboys, yeah. And they had their <laughs> pistols and their rifles. And the guy's like, don't go to the front lines. It's like, fuck you. And he took a bunch of dudes wow. and they went out there and just fought. Yeah, they don't make men like what that happened anymore, to dude. us, dude? Uh, what, what happened to I don't know. Did you guys see? Have you guys? Uh, <laughs> I hurt my back yesterday. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. oh. Tying my shoe. Rough riders. Rough riders. Rough riders. Is that where the. Wow, that's like a popular like bike gang and like Rough Riders. That's been in rap songs. Like that's like a total like. Bro. Yeah, that's where that's the origin of that, huh? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now all that means is. I wonder like, how many people even know that. Ghost riding your whip, you know, and you walk around it. Oh God! Did you hear Justin's rapper name? By the way, <laughs> no. came up with today. He came up with it. His his own. Yeah. yeah. What, what was it? it? It was chocolate cheese. <laughs> chocolate cheese. <laughs> Spitting them bars. He said that earlier today. I was dying, bro. What did you? Hey, Chocolate what was, cheese. What was Adams? You came up fat with? face killer. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, though. That's good. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. I like that. One. That's pretty yeah. good. I'll, t I'll take that one. Yeah. Hey, you guys watch? Yeah, you uh, have you guys? Because we all watch this one, right? Don't we all? Is it one, what, there are very few shows we all get into and watch. I think you is the only one that we all watch. Right? Oh, I haven't watched the, the, oh, the last one. I haven't one. started that yet. Oh, I'm the excited. new one's going. Is it I, just it, as good as the other one? It, it, you know, it, that's why I wanted to talk to you guys. I hope they bring back the, the, the chick he killed or they made it look like he killed. I hope so, they bring it back. They haven't yet. And I'm already- well, don't, don't, I don't yeah. want no spoilers. Dude. So, well, they, they t I mean, like every other season, it's like a whole new situation. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. always been that way. He's right? got to move because he obviously- So, I, I want, why I wanted to- I, why I wanted to talk Murders. to you guys about it is because I can't quite wrap my brain around why I like it so much. Like it's, you know, it's kind of like, I, I know what's kind of going to happen yet. I still, I'm, well, I don't know what's going to happen. And maybe that's what it is, is that, but I, obviously I get the gist of what's probably going to happen. Kind of like a voyeur or whatever into the mind of a, a serial killer. Yeah. Is that what it, so maybe that's what it is because. Yeah, but that's not a real, real serial killers aren't likable. Come on. No. Yeah, of course not. I just mean like. How I do you know? know? You haven't like, known any, do you? Bro. A real serial killer? If you were into peered into the mind of like Jeffrey Dahmer, you'd be like, oh, oh you'd yeah, you'd be horrified. Well, fuck? I mean, every that was one of the most that was one of the most viral Netflix shows. Mindhunter. Ever. Remember that show? Mindhunter? No. It was the, the psychologist that would go I, uh, interview that was all a great the, show. Um serial killer. You never saw Mindhunter? It was uh -uh. a great show. That's a, that's a good Who one. was the one that he killed and then they caught him and then he like escaped and killed a bunch of girls again and they caught him again? Happened Wait, like two or three Bundy? times. Was it Bundy? I don't remember. His urge to this kill is, was I so bad. Justin, your wife is the serial killer, right? She is. Yeah, she's, the, <laughs> she's really into all those shows. So does like, she like you? Does she love you? She yeah she she likes that show. I think uh, she's really more into like the actual like factual right. That, like, uh, she's all this is fake stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. this is too fake for me. She's, that's not how he would like, do it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah you guys are right about Bundy. So move. he was put in a jail cell, escaped within two weeks, settled near Florida State University, and. Began raping and killing more young women. Wow. wow. Yeah. The number he hit was That's uh, a he, fail. He, he, he a lot, right? Wasn't Bundy one of the, the most prolific as far as the amount? No, of, that was the green something killer. I think that killed like yeah. estimated. Well, but, what, but what is that? Like, I'm trying to wrap my brain around what is it that like m makes me like that show so much? And, and maybe I think, Justin, you're right. Like, I'm trying to think of another 
show that they do a couple things really unique. Like, yeah. can you name well, another they, show they definitely where make them likable? That's what it to is. your point, which yeah, yeah it's like you, you, they don't do that. They don't make like the villain. Uh, like you're, you gravitate towards him because it's like so interesting how yeah. he. You, looks you know what I think too is unique. Cause I can't. I don't know if I've seen another show like this. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong. Like where uh, the it's like narrated. Where it's in his mind, it's yeah, yeah, like yeah. so. When you there's there's several times in every episode where you're watching him doing something and there's no talking. It's yeah. him narrating yeah, how yeah. he's thinking. And I just think that's a really yeah. interesting way to to write, right? Like yeah. it's like uh, you're, there's it's like no internal monologue. It's going off. Yeah. Is, have you ever seen that? Have you narrative. seen that before? Can you think of a, a movie or a show um, where you get your your where it's constantly like that? Because yeah. there have some shows where the, you'll the Wonder Years. Oh, right, the Wonder <laughs> Years. Did they do it in Wonder Years? Remember yeah. that? Did you ever watch Wonder Years? Yeah, yeah he was always did. narrating like uh, his entire day. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Do you guys have a crush on on the girl? What's her name? Winnie. Winnie. She's cute. I, I, you know, my my crush was always Kelly Kapowski, dude. Oh yeah. yeah she's Who's like, that one? She's Bro, that's Saved by, by the Bell. Bell. I don't know all these names, dude. What names? Saved by the Bell. Names. Well, no, I know the names of the show, but I I, I guarantee I have, you had the poster, dude. To this day, aside from Britney Spears, I know no famous like hot girls, and I never followed actresses. Oh, that was and like actors. her show name. I don't know what her real name is. Oh, oh, Kelly, dude. It's Adam like, was a Slater guy. He's a Slater. Yeah. <laughs> He likes Slater. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I've yeah. never been good about keeping up. Remember on Slater would dance? He do like ballet moves. Oh, yeah. Saved by the Bell. It's like what? Yeah. Why are you busting just, that out? Just randomly. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, girls loved it. So is this season good? Yeah. I mean, I, I, oh, I. That's what my point is. Like maybe somebody else is like, oh, you know how it's going to play out, so it's not that good, but it's still good. You know, because they do a good job of like it's all new characters. So I'm I'm already intrigued mm. by learning the new characters, and then of course I know what I know is going to happen is like he's going to fall in love with a girl. Yeah. He's going to you know what I'm saying and then eventually all the crazy shit's going to happen. So you kind of know, kind of. I hope happen. that old, the girl from the last one comes back somehow. That's what I hope. I he her. killed her. Didn't he kill her? They didn't show her die. He set the house on fire and left. So that leaves the oh, door I open. Remember how it ended? That leaves the door open for. Remember he cut off some of his toes to leave like evidence that they, so they thought he died in there. Too. Yeah, uh, that's his baby's mama. Uh, what you're talking about? Yes. Right? Yeah. And he left the kid. Remember he abandoned the kid. Right. Which, by the way, can I say something that mm -hmm. ruined it for me? Mm -hmm. I kind of liked him as a character. As soon as he left his kid, I'm like, fuck this guy. Yeah, but do you he want, killed hella people. Do you want the kid hanging out with the serial killer? Well, that's well, so, no. But so, I mean, okay, I, I have a little bit. I have like both sides of that. I agree with you. Like that first initial, like how could you? Yeah. You know, as a father, yeah, he kills like, hella people. And you're like, but then I go right. like, well, you know, if I knew I had this internal conflict and I was constantly killing people, I probably wouldn't want my son to go down the same path as me. So by probably giving him away is the yeah. best best father yeah. decision you can make, right? Yeah, they dealt with that. In <laughs> I mean, Dexter. that's how good it is, though. That's, that's a great point. That's yeah. a great example of. A, a scene or something that happens in that show where you even probably have internal conflict on how you feel about it. Well, right. for, for the dad in me goes hell no right away, yes. but then the then the logical side goes wait a second. If I have an addiction it, to killing people, if I'm that damaged and I'm trying really yeah, hard and I want to break, pass that I want to break the chain. That's a tough conundrum. There's, to be well, for me, it's this my own psychology because I can and this sounds fucked up. I can forgive the character for murdering all these people <laughs> and be like, oh, you know, kind of like them a little bit. As soon as he drops his son off, though, <laughs> I was trying, like, fuck him. Yeah. You know, and Jessica's like, what do you mean? He's just, the guy's murder. He's killing hella people. As yeah. soon as he gets rid of his kid, I'm like, screw this guy. <laughs> what the wrong with Should have brought him along for all yeah. the serial killing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raise him up. <laughs> Teach him how to do it the right way. Earmuffs. We're yeah. going to watch that tonight. So we'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah, you have to watch. I like. Yeah. I mean, I like I liked that with dude, I gotta shows that I'll watch. I got to tell you guys about my my toddler. He cracks me up, dude. So I get texts from Jessica every, every morning about something else he's doing. This morning, she goes to wake him up. And he's laying on his hands and he's looking at her and he's giggling. And she's like, what are you doing? He's like, nothing. She's like, what are you doing? What are you? He's like, hey, 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 hey. And he pulls out his hand and he's like, booger. <laughs> she's like, what? <laughs> he had a booger on his <laughs> He thought it was hilarious. Dude. <laughs> yes. Dude, last uh, night before last, we we're, we're, we're going upstairs and like the routine, you know, I'm, I'm downstairs kind of, kind of cleaning up and stuff like that. Katrina is normally bathing him, getting him ready for bed. He now come like, she'll he's like, Max wants to say goodnight, hon. He'll come down the stairs, give me a big hug and kiss me. And then he, he wants me, he wants to see me go to bed also at the same time. And like into my room, all right, daddy, come on, you go to bed too. And so I gotta, I gotta yeah, pretend like, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I come up and we're holding his hand <laughs> and we're walking down the hall. His room's right here, and then and then ours is down the hall. He's like, "Okay, Daddy, you go to bed now, and Mommy and I go to our bed." 
And Katrina's okay. like, no, 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 this is not our bed. <laughs> because he's been getting up in the middle of the night since we've been in the new place. And like, you know, she'll take him back. And a lot of times she'll fall asleep in his room and then stay in his room. So that's happened enough times now. And he's gotten used to mommy coming to his bed. So like he's saying, good, he says good night, tells me to go to my room. And mommy and I go to our room. <laughs> like, Dude, no, that's not that, yours and mommy's room. That video you sent of him <laughs> and uh, Aurelius playing when we came over. Yeah. I loved it, man. Oh, you know, I told Katrina. They're similar. They're similar little guys, you know? No, no. Very. It yeah. was actually, there was a moment where I don't know if, if I said anything to Justin or not, but it, I actually thought it was hilarious. I'm like, th there was a scene where Max and Aurelius are like playing with the sand and they're all like quiet and doing their thing. And then Justin's two boys are body slamming each other. Yeah. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> I'm like, if this isn't like our kids to a T right here, like oh, this is yeah. hilarious. Like they're over there being all quiet, playing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Then Justin's boys are like, yeah. <laughs> slam, slam, body slamming on the lawn. <laughs> like, oh my God. Typical. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I would have caught that. That yeah. would have been a good clip of them nah, doing I got, that. But I, I got the boys. You he, know? Uh, 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 Jessica works out in the morning in the garage and so she has to bring Aurelius and he's starting to like lift things and and mimic her working out. Yeah, God, you're getting so, all excited. Oh, I'm getting so pumped, bro. Ooh, I just yeah. want one. I just want one kid that's into lifting weights. That's all. I'm not asking. Oh, I else. still think that you your one. your older ones. I still think that. I mean, I mean they're still late, young. Yeah, look how li how late we we got into it. Yeah, I you know I think like what's cool about being dads that are lifting even at our age and as consistent as we all do, like that's imprinted in their minds. And so even if they don't ad adopt it right now everybody at one point in their life, I don't care who you are, have a moment where, you know, eating gets out of control a little bit or you haven't been, or you yeah. lose your breath at doing something and you, and you have this, whether that happens in your teens, 20s, or 30s, eventually that happens. Yeah, but what I mean is not that they'll start working out. I want one obsessed kid like, <laughs> like me. That's all I want. I want one kid. I want to come home and I you want a kid like, to be addicted like you are. To yes. yeah. I want I want to come <laughs> home and be sad. like, son, you've been in the garage for two and a half hours. You need to stop. No, I want <laughs> that's no, no, hilarious. No. And then like, no, you got to stop and then look at Jessica and be like, uh huh. Yeah, he's crazy like I was. You I'm know? trying. Uh, you, I'm trying to uh, promote that as much as possible with like you know the electronic um, conversation we had. Like I've been like literally dictator guy coming in with you know it's not just the jacket it's yeah. uh <laughs> yeah you got you got your uh, north korea jacket. i was gonna ask you about your nazi jacket yeah no, right no, no no it's not that it's north no, korea bro, bro. it's more like it's, uh, north like kim, korean you yeah. know like <laughs> kim jong-il um that's the kind of vibes i'm bringing in here today but yeah so i've been like i've just taken away and it's been amazing the transformation already it's so annoying because you you realize that's literally what it is. And it I could pinpoint it to the amount of time just spent just glued to this thing. Yep. Yeah, me too. And and they I, I mean they're they're helpful now. Like they interact with us. Like we uh we all do things. The family so much easier. Like the friction to go from one place to the other has gone down. And I'm just like so annoyed by it. Yeah. Do you notice that when you first take them off, there's like a I don't know, 20, 30 minute period where they're just like, Oh yeah. It's like ripping shitty. the bandaid off. Yeah. 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 And then you're like, all right, we'll got to wait, wait it out. You'll yeah. feel better in a second. Right. I know. Yeah. You have to kind of like just, yeah. Calculated weight. Yeah, it's so annoying. Do you think that, uh, do you think we feel that way because we already have a, a bias going into it or we already have our own, uh, fears and concerns around it. And so that we, we exaggerate those feelings that we see within our kids or do you think that a majority of people are just so naive to it because they're not paying attention and they just assume that, oh, my kid's acting out because he's a kid or my toddler's being a pain in the ass because he's a toddler and they don't actually ever go, I mean, that's a hmm, good, I wonder if like, right, I, 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 have, I, have, I, have I ever truly tracked and measured, because this is my, like my suggestion to any parents that are going through similar things or phases that we have is like, like, you know, maybe your kid's not, but like, it's worth teasing it out. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, and I've done it enough times because I've even questioned myself like, oh, maybe I feel that way. Mm -hmm. I'm being yeah. a bit of an alarmist. Right. Let me allow, let me allow him to do it a little bit more. And it's, I've done that enough times where I allow it and then take it away. It's allow clear. It. It's very clear to me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's very I, clear. I think it's just like anything else. It's, it's the awareness of it. Like, it's so easy to kind of go through the day to day things and, and just uh, try and stay on top of like whatever uh, constant kind of disciplines and things you normally do. But, things like that, that, uh, you can, you can parse it out and like really examine it and look at it and, and test, do a little bit of an experimentation with it, yeah. take it away, bring yeah. it back in, like just see, see what happens as a result of that. And it becomes pretty obvious. Yeah. The yeah. challenge is that, that this stuff is, hasn't been around so, so long. So there's not a ton of data to back up what parents are feeling, but there is data to show now that 
kids who spend a lot of time occupied on electronics or whatever, yeah. they don't, they're not able to regulate their emotions as well because <clears throat> the electronics act as a distraction. So the kid doesn't feel and process frustration, anger, boredom, whatever it is, because they're watching this thing. So when you take it away, one of the, one of the I mean, if you'll notice, right, you take it away, especially from a little kid, they get irritable. You know All of a sudden. You, you know and it's annoy- because they're, 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 they're not processing their feelings when they're on there distracted. You know what annoys me is like how many parents or people out there like need these studies and these books and all these things yeah. to determine these things for them instead of just using their own in- intuition. You know, just paying attention and, and consciously like uh, putting effort. Like it, to me, that's just annoying to me because it's, it's like there's always like some new method or some new book or like just – be there, be present, like pay attention. You're well, right. Well, that was, that was the, so the thing, the thing that I learned from all this or the, um, the attitude that I'm trying to have going into it is really instead of being upset or discipline or structure around my kids, I'm really trying to take the responsibility as a dad, right? And be like, listen, I'm the adult in this situation. Of course they love it. If I was a kid, I would love the same thing too. I'd want to do it. Like it's shame on me for like being upset that they would want yeah. to do it. It's my responsibility to try and insert other things in their life. And like, you know, which is, it's just, Hey, it's hard. It takes discipline. We all, all everyone listening probably are, are dads that work and work a lot of hours and are busy. You and can't a lot become from- a better parent without becoming a better person. Yeah. That's why it's so totally. hard. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's not just about doing things. You actually have to become a better person. Like that's hard on a consistent and it takes work it basis. Yeah, no, it's constantly so, need to talk about yeah. it too, just and, to figure it out. And look, Justin, to your point, uh, I, I have compassion for parents because there's so much conflicting, yeah advice and information and literally we're told not to trust our intuition we're told not to trust right you know what we think we're observing and so as a parent you ever deal with like like talk like a new mom especially new moms right because you're a new mom you have this baby and they're how many times they're told like well i mean how do you feel trust your intuition trust your feelings and they're like i don't know what to trust i don't know how to what I'm supposed to do, what I'm supposed to feel. Mm-hmm. And then after they, you know, they get through it, they go, oh yeah, I, I was definitely on point when I thought my baby needed more food or I thought my baby, right. you know, something was wrong or whatever. But you're constantly <clears throat> challenged and gaslit by mm-hmm. people and doctors and other people's opinions. So it's like, I mean, I have compassion for parents. Yeah, and it, it too. And you see that all change when, when the second kid comes and, you know, and like they've been through that, the unknown yes. kind of navigated through those waters. But I, I do feel like it's, it, to me, it's disheartening because I, I just feel like there's just a lot of people out there that don't really listen to their own, um, their own intelligence, their own way of, right. of looking at it. And it's, it, there's, we're just so bombarded with information and people trying to like have all these answers. Well, I mean, I, I don't think they really, I mean, think about it that much, right? Because it was so new, right? Like, I mean, you guys, old, your guys' kids are older. So when they first were born, it wasn't yeah. really, you, maybe you didn't think about it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you didn't, you maybe, and maybe what you only saw were the benefits. Like, oh, wow, this is nice. I get a little, like my kids are actually entertained while I get to do this. Like, oh, yeah. it's not that much different from television. And so I'm sure in their mind, they probably were just not, not thinking about it. You know what I, I think that's exciting or optimistic uh, is um, the generation now, you know, we, we tend to always harp on the the young generation coming up right now and say, talk about all the negative things. But one of the things that I think that's, and it's been highlighted in studies and stuff like that is the level of self-awareness that the kids have, the younger kids, this generation coming up has. Mm. And some of them are already policing themselves. I mean, no FAP is an example yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. You have these kids now that are buying flip phones instead of having it because they want it. So, so they're, they're ten, we, you know, unfortunately your, your Sal's oldest and yours are, we're at an age where it was kind of like in the beginning of it where yeah. now there's enough awareness around it that even these young kids are smart enough to Less see. Less of them are getting on social media. Yeah. yeah it's now, be, it's I, like, I love to see it's like a flex now as a, like a popular kid in school. Now it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't get on social media. So there's like, it's definitely changing. It went from like, that was so focused like to to be on social and to have an Instagram and to have all these things. It seems like there's kind of a a shift happening right now where it's a bit of a flex. If you don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't need, you don't need it. I don't need to be on social. Speaking of, uh, of families and stuff, Chelsea Handler, I think that's her last name. She put out one of the saddest videos I've ever seen. Who's that? So so she's that comedian, Chelsea Handler. Am I saying she had a show? Yeah. Chelsea Handler. So she did this video. So she's this fifth. She's She's married to Joe Coy, I believe. Say what? Joe oh, really? Coy, the the comedian. Oh, is she married to mm-hmm. him. Okay, so she's this fifty year old woman, 
And she always talks about how great it is to not have kids. Fine. You don't want to have kids. That's, that's your business. But she did this whole video about like, here's how my day looks. I wake up at 630 and I have an edible because I don't have kids and I get to do this. And to the whole day, she says like how awesome, yeah, how awesome her day is because she doesn't have kids and I don't have to listen to toddler squee screaming. And I went to Paris for lunch and I did this and I'm watching and I'm like, this just comes across as defensiveness. You, you know, that mm. one person, bro, who, the irony of that yeah. is that you literally just said she starts her day with getting high. Yeah. Like you, you are literally using substance to disconnect for a reason. Like <laughs> that's not a big enough, but red even, flag, right? even more than that, you ever meet someone who like they're, they do hmm. something, but they have to talk about it so much of course, because you know, you're that closing they, yourself. That's, that's what that is. Yeah. You're closing yourself. No. It's such a, I want, and I, I mean, I, everybody, we're all guilty of that. It right? pissed off a lot of people, right? There's a lot of parents on there like, Oh God, you're, you know, you're, you're going to be so lonely, this and that. And I saw it more as like, I felt bad. Yeah. Like you felt the need to make this video to defend yourself, you know, like you're very defensive about not having kids. Cause she, she did a whole stand up act and half the act was about that. Very hmm. sad video. If you watch it, watch it through that lens and you'll see what I'm talking about. Is it on about. Netflix? Where'd you see it on her YouTube? No, it's just, it was on uh, Twitter. She probably posted it on Instagram uh, too. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah. Super sad. You know, talking about substance. Why don't you uh, do our, our Ned commercial right now? Oh, I was going to talk about the brain blend. We haven't brought that up in a long time. That's yeah, by haven't. that's my favorite favorite. Dude, uh, we are. This is I'm almost on my second bottle of it already. We've we've been pumping. Tell through. me that wasn't a home run. <laughs> no, yeah. I do like it. I do like it a lot. Yeah, because you have the regular hemp oil blend, which obviously feels good, but mm -hmm. that one because of the focus on cannabinoids that improve cognitive performance and the addition of things like lion's mane. Which, by the way, lion's mane. I have a study. We'll post it in the show notes. They have isolated the compound in lion's mane that now they show, okay, this is why it, it stimulates nerve and brain cell growth. But non, uh, nonetheless, it's in uh, the brain blend. So they put the lion's mane on there. You well. know, it, it has it has a very similar feel, and maybe you can help me understand why, uh, as pure. Yeah. They, yeah, they, it's got like a nootropic kind of feel to yeah, it. Yeah, not, uh, not at all stimulant. You know, stimulant like mm -hmm. caffeine or anything like that, uh, just clear sharp very similar as pure is it is there anything they both share in no. there no nothing no no they, they both have different ingredients but i don't uh, think i've actually combined them yet oh well maybe there you I'll, go maybe i'll try that now you're talking my language yeah. <laughs> throw it all together <laughs> yeah. try it pre-workout do it an hour and a half before your workout then 45 minutes before do your normal caffeine and then watch how you feel in your workout for oh. body for like body parts uh focused workouts it's phenomenal for lifting crazy heavy probably not but if you want to like feel a muscle squeeze and you want to get a pump or whatever, it's actually pretty damn. I don't really work out pretty anymore. Pretty damn good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just stop. Yeah. You I was getting, I was, yeah, I was getting yeah. too buff. I was like, you know, the <laughs> muscle thing making over Making everybody it. insecure. Yeah, it's like it's, you know, I'm tired of people feeling uncomfortable talking about Spe nutrition around speaking me. Speaking so. about right. speaking of looking good, I noticed how uh, nice and shiny your head looks and how nice mm. and smooth. Are you <laughs> yeah. putting the Are you putting the caldera on it? I do. It looks good. Dude. I do. I do. It I, makes your head look really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I do the. Um, I always forget all the names. What's the the, the everything? Well, no, I just do the the, the two I the two I have on here. The serum is second, right? I use the the cr first thing in the morning after I get out of the shower. I do the face cream, and uh, and I, I like the way that feels and looks right away. And then before we podcast, I normally shine it up a little bit with the with the I uh, had serum. Someone asked, so it, it didn't you bring up a study about it being able to reduce like wrinkles. skin wrinkles yes yeah. yeah because i was just talking to courtney about that because she was talking about her friends the botox and all this stuff and like how they have these parties and whatever and all what? this stuff yeah they do botox parties where they like all hang out and then the botox and wine those are and, super popular you're not familiar with those no. dude it's, it's a total a botox racket party? dude yeah huge like, racket it's wow. like it's like the, the i was actually trying to like hey maybe we can hustle this because she's a nurse <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's the angle here? Bro, you know, I would make money hey, off this. Bro, that's a serious side hustle. Dude, especially since she's a nurse. Mind pump Botox party? Bro, yeah. they, they- Hit they, me up. I got an email. Um, it's like, uh, the they're like those- Botox They're, they're also com. like MLM style. Like they do them like those candle parties and stuff like that. So, so nurses, who administers the Botox of the parties? They're like- Yeah, so there? it's somebody that is, uh, I guess, like, it does, it's it's pretty low. You don't have to be like a, you a don't. registered nurse. You just have to be underneath a doctor. 
So you got to be some kind of like. So I mean, it's like MOM style. So you get a underneath, technician. Almost. Yes, you get so underneath a, a doctor. Te- I don't know the exact specifics. Yeah, I know. But you I, get under one of them, right? And then now you can host these that, parties. But. Then I have these parties. I invite my you know ten girlfriends over. We sit down. We gossip. We do our thing. Have our wine, and then we all shoot each other with Botox. And you know, every one of those things are costing money. You're making a little so bit of cream. So what's the bro version of this? Is, I was just going to say. I'm getting here's this is so interesting because uh, I've heard of parties like this for women for the candles, candles, makeup, sex toys. Uh, yeah. like lots of different things. Yeah, yeah. Guys don't really do that. No. Do we? No, we just have poker night. Why don't we do that? Um, I don't think we buy things. We don't plan things well. We don't buy things or, or we're sold differently. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. think it's the really? same. Yeah. Maybe, maybe someone. Ima- okay, let me put it this way. Maybe someone just hasn't like shook it up like okay. that. Like, imagine, what if I, unless imagine, you end up at some dude's house and they're trying to sell you Mona V. Or yeah. Like, oh, you asshole. Well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Imagine you went to like, imagine I invited you guys over. I'm like, oh, and by the way, guys, we're gonna do, I don't know, what was something that we're all into. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna have a crate team party. I don't know. And you guys show Maybe me that's the, why, because guys, guys don't have a team party. Anymore. Like, okay, I, I've seen candles, I've seen sex toys, I've seen the Botox. What is it that we would do in common? There's, there's not even a thing, right? Well, first of all, all of those wouldn't work. Imagine a sex toy party with your buddies. Hey guys, come over. I'm gonna show you guys some. Yeah. No. I mean, over. I, could, I actually, like I can actually see that more likely than almost anything else. I mean, what? It, yeah, I a could, sex toy party. I mean, I could with your buddies of all the things that you could think of wow. that we would do. I mean, let's okay. You're <laughs> the guy who gonna, orders one like every month. <laughs> no, okay? hold on a second. So stop trying you, to take the spotlight you, off yourself. Hey, no, I just say I go to a sex listen, party. Listen, you've already sold yourself out. All I gotta do is hit this button on this app, real quick. Yeah, see, you're you're already into all the cool toys, anyways. And if if I if I had a party at my house, we had some beers, stuff like that, and I'm like, bro, I've got all the cutting edge sex toys. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd look at Justin and be like, let's get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, wow. yeah, I yeah. hope those doors aren't locked. That, yeah. is, <laughs> that is lies. Justin might not show up, but you would be there. No, I wouldn't. You would be the first one Here's there. Here's the deal. Uh, Sex toy market for men sucks. Yeah, but you're, you're, not, yeah, but you're buying it for your partner. Like no, hold chaps. on a second. There ain't no sex toy better than a guy can on his, his own hand that he can do for himself. That's just a fact. Fact. 100%. True. Women, for they now. definitely get- For now. Oh, that's till AI, Maybe, maybe till we AI. get virtual goggles and you know we go ham. <laughs> hey, did you did you hear? Uh, I would get out of control. Did you guys see the? Uh, hey, go try this out, Justin. Yeah, you know, no. Did you guys see the Jordan Peterson clip talking about AI yeah, and I pornography? Did. Yeah, it's it's gonna be kind of crazy, right? Yeah. You remember me telling you guys how I, I said what's gonna be really dangerous too is that there's gonna be a massive push in the positive side of all that. I know. Remember, like I was telling you, like mm. because depression. Is so high that we'll sell all the other stuff. And anxiety is so Mm -hmm. high that what you're going to see, I guarantee we're going to see this. You're going to have, oh, here's a percent, here's a, here's a group of people that suffer from anxiety and depression. And because they have this, you know, AI friend Mm -hmm. slash, you know, it wasn't sex partner, whatever. Yeah. Wasn't it the movie Her that like yeah. it, it was so it was yes. uh, their psychologist basically, like the therapist. Yeah. That yeah. Constantly talking about it. They're gonna be program they're gonna program to make you feel good. Okay, oh, now, yeah. now here's now here that'll be a debate and discussion, but here's where it's gonna get really crazy. Because remember, it's not a real person. Where are the lines gonna be? For marriage and stuff like that. No, just forget that. Rights. All no, that. no, forget that. Oh. What if there's a, uh, here's your, your, your virtual sex partner and you can murder them. You can rape them. You can, they look like this. They look like that. Are there going to be any lines? Are people going to be like, wait a minute, you can't do that. That is a well, they there that, that is an under there won't there AI won't be machine. initially, but then there eventually will when we start to give it like real rights, like humans. And yeah. it gives and like you can marry your sex robot. Well, that's going to be weird. You know that's going to happen. Yeah. I know. Of course, that's going to go that There's direction. There's been dudes that try. Of course, it's the guys. Yeah. <laughs> there, was, there, was there was a guy first that first to market. Well, you married, know what? You know what? Uh, Peterson was talking about, which was such a good point. Is this like? Because I know there's probably a lot of people. Uh, I mean, even when I told Katrina, like, oh, really? I'm like, you know what? You're thinking like a woman right now. That's your problem. You have to think like a man. Oh, okay. And a man. I bet that went over well. Yeah, it never. It never goes over well when you when you start off like that. Are you mansplaining me right now? Yeah. So, no, like. Guys are superficial like that, where yeah. it's it's about the and if if it can fool you enough to to look real enough, like that's all that matters. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, um, strip, strip clubs are in business, and no guy, okay, is under the impression that they're coming home with them. But yet we still go and spend all kinds of money and tell ourselves that, even though we know yeah. there's nobody. Nobody goes to strip clubs. I'm like, different. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm it's, it's like you, you don't There's we don't care. Guy, right? yeah, you don't dude. care. She, she actually me. liked me. Yeah. 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 She's you don't care. I got her number. There's always there is always there's okay. There's always there is always that moron who actually thinks that maybe he has a shot or whatever or that oh it's me. She really okay. There is a percentage, but. They would be out of business if they relied just on that percentage. They're yeah. in business because a majority of them still go, knowing damn well they're not coming home with anybody. Yeah, but to, to, but it, women would just be fooled differently than than men. You know, it would be more. I mean, if it's smart, it would be more compassionate. It would listen. It'd just be a constant compliment machine. That's why I said <laughs> affirmations all day long. <laughs> God, God, you look great. He's so <laughs> no, that's too fake. Did you do something? No, with dude, your that, hair? I agree with him. <laughs> All the that's things his husbands say. are terrible at, like, he never tells me how good I look. Hey, he never tells me. skin is radiant, too. Did you guys ever watch, there was a, uh, was it the Chappelle show? Might have been the Chappelle show, where you could rent a, a guy mm. for your wife to do the stuff you don't want to do. Like, yeah. he has sex with her, and then the guy shows up and hugs her afterwards. <laughs> and they're cuddling Does the it? cut, like, the spooning afterwards yeah, for you? Dude. Oh, yeah, dude. That's so funny. Oh, dude, God. that's messed up. Dude, speaking of stuff that's messed up, I this, this was a relatively, it was like a few years old, but I found this article. Did you guys know that they potentially have the technology to erase your memories? Well, that's not scary. Yeah, did you, guys, did you know that? You're talking no. like like men in black kind of look into this pen. Like don't, they, they don't need any technology for me. That just tends to happen naturally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just forget shit just all the time. Hit me in the head a yeah. few times. Just because, just because, like, do they have the opposite sound? Because yeah. I give that to you. Yeah. No, they, uh, they, they, they've done it with animals, where an animal go through a maze and they can target the memory. So it's not like the animal forgets everything and becomes amnesiac. They can target the memory so that the animal then forgot the maze. And so the way that they're selling it is they're like, this could be an amazing technology because you could. Like for my trauma, get rid yes. of like, like well, wow. Now I could see the market well, for that, that being huge. Is that better or is no, it better it's not to better. deal with? Of course it's that's not better. The, that's the, that's exactly not the better. question. No, it's because not. Because your body is still like, okay, so how much of that do they take into account in terms of like what they talk about stored memory within your body? Well, let's just theoretically say they could erase all of it. Are you then the same person? Would you be the no, same person you are not. without your your of course no, not. No, it's of course not. Adversity, you know that that creates your character. Imagine that. Oh, it'd be so. What was that movie with uh, uh, Eternal Sun, uh, Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? Uh -huh. Do you ever watch that? Is that the one with Jim Carrey? Yeah, you I watch never that. have. You guys brought that it's up good. a long oh, time ago, and I actually good. never. It's so. I was for Doug to, I'm going to ruin it for good. you because you probably won't watch it. Yeah, I'll ruin go, it for you. Go ahead. He meets this girl, and they just fall for each other, and it turns out. Here's the spoiler. So if you don't want to spoil it, fast forward. It turns out that they had fallen in love before and broken up, and it was so devastating that both of them agreed to have their memories erased. But then they happen to run into each other again, yeah, just and randomly. fall in love all, all over, over again. again. Oh, yeah. wow. And then they and it's how crazy is that? You know what? You're, there has to be maybe Andrew could look the this up. There has to be story. a spoiler uh, alert. Uh, like you know how there's like the seven second rule: food falls on the ground, you can eat it after if you can eat it. I thought if you it was get, five second. Is yeah, it five or I thought it was five, seven? Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, you can eat it, right? If it's five seconds, it goes 10 or longer. You can't oh, eat yeah. it or whatever. Bacteria. Wait, there's there's got to be a time frame for spoiler alert that it's spoiler alert. Because if it's a year old movie, it's no longer <laughs> oh, yeah. a spoiler alert. It's your it's fault, like asshole, for not old. watching it. Like, yeah. you, you, like, But there's got to be, like for you, I shouldn't be sharing anything with you because that's just dropped, right? Really like a week ago, yeah, right? Yeah, there's got to yeah. be uh, like an unsaid rule that... It's considered spoiler alert if it's within the first month. I, I honestly know. think that that's that should only be for those types of movies or shows where they're they're trying to reveal like a M Night Shyamalan kind of a, a yeah, twist, yeah, like, like a, twist. a twist where it's like super unexpected. Otherwise. Like tough, dude. There's got to be late like, to market. There's got to be like an unsaid rule somewhere. Just like you're like not really in a relationship until it, it's a, on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Until it says like in a relationship, you're mm -hmm. not in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like there's got to be like an unsaid Blair rule. Blair Witch Project, though, like they should have gone as long as possible because like people really believed like that it was real. That it was real, yeah. and it, it made it like. And I somebody ruined it for me right before I went into the theater and was like, "Oh yeah, this was all." Um, stage and all this kind of oh. stuff. I'm like, really? And then I watch it, and and everybody else was tripping out. Then you're mad because you're like, like, they're uh, shaking this camera on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is some bullshit. I wanted to believe. <laughs> oh, that's sad, dude. Yeah. That's so sad. Uh, so, uh, ready for some fun conspiracy theory stuff, Justin? Oh wow, I am always ready. Do dude. you guys know what harp is? So this is the uh, weather altering technology. Yeah, uh, uh, look this up, Andrew. It's H A A R P. So is this where they do the jet streams that everyone used to say is like causing stuff? 
Is well, that the same isn't thing? Isn't it like seeding <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, no, I clouds for I Wait, wait, wait. You don't know, you know what I'm talking about? That that's been a conspiracy forever where you see all Oh, the, the jet the jet the, the jet streams. Oh, yeah. they they make the white Yes. The, the, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, it's not that. So, HARP stands Laugh for at me like it's not like a real thing, <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> uh, you know the molecules? Yeah. Uh, it's mitochondria. For high frequency active auroral research program. So, basically what it does is it it blasts certain frequencies of I'm not quite sure what, uh, but it 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 brown note. <laughs> it's yeah. a brown note. It what does that say, Andrew? Original purpose to analyze the ionosphere and investigate the potential for developing ionospheric enhancement technology for radio communications and surveillance. Okay, so technically, just what I was going to say. Technically, <laughs> this <laughs> technically this technology could change the, could affect the weather. And here's the conspiracy theory. If you shoot it into the ground, it'll aggravate the ions enough to where it could trigger massive earthquakes. Volcanoes and earthquakes. Yes. yes. Right. Really? And so this big conspiracy is that HARP is a weather control super weapon. Yeah. And we could fuck with countries by blasting their and causing earthquakes and tsunamis and shit like that with HARP. You never heard of that? No. Yeah, yeah like, dude. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks anything like it's been, is fair game at this point. Yeah. It looks like oh, it's I been think. around since 1993. It's been around for a long time. Yeah. No? That's when it was. Well, I thought because yeah. I thought this was responsible. Maybe it's a different technology for uh, cloud seeding. That's different. That, yeah. Is that the what, what's the thing I'm talking about with the streams? What's that? It's called oh, something. That's, uh, uh, God, Andrew, what's that conspiracy theory? It's uh, so that's like up in Alaska. And no, 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 no. You no, see, no, no. when you see, remember when it, when you know when a jet flies and it leaves like oh, the, you're talking about uh, chemtrails, chemtrails, chemtrails. Yes, that's totally yeah. That so that's not no no that's not that's real. that's unsubstantiated yeah. it is yeah are you yeah. sure harp is real <laughs> I've wa I watched some pretty good YouTube videos that I, there's yeah that's the thing about the YouTube videos but yeah it's um it, uh, there's a lot of people that still think that because um they think that it, it's some way of control of like it, again if you want to go globally about all of the conspiracies and how, what they ha all have in common it's anything and everything possible to make us weaker. Like is psychologically, physically, scared. Uh, yeah, just scared and, and oppressed. And yeah. so like anything in that direction, like, so that would like fall into chemically uh, controlling uh, you know, the way that we like have all these toxins and all these things we're fighting. Chemically internally. castrate us, yeah. the whole deal. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the reason why I'm reading about heart, our heart popped up is it was that huge earthquake in, I think it was Turkey. One of the worst. You guys hear about, hear about this? Terrible. Terrible earthquake. Six point oh, something. Yeah, that was seven crazy. Point eight. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, maybe you could look oh, it up, wow. Andrew. It was Terrible huge. earthquake. And then there's all the conspiracy theorists and like, well, Turkey just opposed a con another country's uh, oh, wow. joining into NATO, and uh, everybody, all the Western nations were pissed off about it. And there, and then there was film. Wow. And so this is unsubstantiated. This is just again, this is fun conspiracy theory corner. Yeah. So this is not, you know, don't take this seriously. But there was film of. Apparently, one of the signatures of HARP is strange electrical uh, disturbances. Okay. Because of how it works, it creates this crazy-looking lightning. Yeah. And apparently, there's film of that happening, like doo -doo 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 -doo, a bunch of weird-looking, not normal lightning, and then the earthquake hitting. Okay. So, oh wait. So found you, it. you know that what you're just describing? Look! 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 See all? Did you see all the 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 yeah. electrical disturbances? So look, that right that same exact electrical disturbance and like. That was the same thing that happened when we had those rains and um, when all of a sudden we had fire. Actually, it wasn't even rain, right? It was just an the electrical oh, storm right. that we we got hit with. And all of a sudden now we got like the craziest fires California ever had. Yeah. What about- So what? I was up that night and you look over in the distance over this mountain and you could literally see all these sporadic like lightning storms. And I'm like- where where did this come from? Like where where does this generate out in the ocean? And it, there's no rain, and there's barely any wind. It's just purely electrical. Yeah. So this weird. is weird. Yeah. So this is again, this is all unsubstantiated, but these videos apparently were showing like this weird looking light. Did you guys see? Did you guys see the one where in Rio where Jesus got struck? Yeah. Oh yeah. Did yeah. you see that? I that looks the cool. statue. Yeah, that looks what wild. A trippy picture. Yeah, it's got. a super trippy picture. I saw. I was like, I didn't know if it was real. You know, I was at dinner with my aunt and uncle last night. We were actually talking about conspiracy theories and sharing stuff online. And it's like, I, we're we're quickly moving into a time where, like, I, I'm I'm always hesitant to share or 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 show somebody something because I'm now my default is it's fake. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. it's rare now and like that's only going to get worse as all these like yep. there's so much fakes. distrust in media now it's crazy yeah so it's like you know is that going to be like a thing in the future where it's like that's not a good if thing, someone sent no, you something not. like you automatically default it's not real like you better prove you, you need to have x amount of things that, to cross you know what that'll it. increase increase tribalism mm -hmm. because if everybody because yeah, then you only trust people in your that's group. right and then whatever they say is what you're going to trust, unless it comes from that source. I know you don't trust it because anything could be deep fake, anything could be fake news, and um, so it's a weird time. Yep, it's a really, really strange, uh, strange time. Today's shout out is going to be to Ryan Mickler. Oh uh, yeah. We love the guy. He's got a great podcast. Uh, Good person to shout out right now because we've been talking a lot of fatherhood stuff, and I think that he has uh, he has some really good conversations, in particular for men and, and fathers. I, I really like Ryan's. I yeah. remember when we first met him, we all liked him right yeah, away. Yeah, he's a great guy. So his, his Instagram is at Ryan and then Mickler's M-I-C-H-L-E-R. Let's go check him out. All right, check this out. Uh, go to mphormones.com and see if hormone optimization and peptide therapy is right for you. This stuff takes your fitness to the next level. We're talking about growth hormone releasing peptides, peptides that improve cognitive performance. This is legit stuff, by the way. You're working with a doctor. We're also looking at hormone optimization, testosterone. You have low testosterone. You can use testosterone to boost it up and build more muscle and burn more body fat. This is both for men and for women. Go check them out. Go to mphormones.com. See if it's right for you. All right, here comes the show. Our first caller is Jennifer from Ontario. Hey, Jennifer, how can we help you? Hi hey guys, how are you? Good. Good, good. Thank you so much for having me on the show. And I'm really excited to just get on started with my question. So I am 19 years old and I resistance train five days a week and I'm trying to bulk. I weigh 120 pounds and I've been eating at a caloric surplus for months on end now. And my maintenance is 1800 and or like 2000. And I'm currently eating 2,600. I barely gain any weight. And all I've noticed is my body fat percentage is going up while my muscle mass percentage is also decreasing. So my body fat percentage used to be 16. Now it's 24. Um, is this a problem with my nutrition or training? Also, I have scoliosis, so I can't really do the main compound lifts like barbell back squat or deadlifts um, and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Mm. Now you're eating 2,600 calories. You're hitting your protein targets, I'm assuming. Yeah, I eat 130 grams of protein. Okay. And then in your question that you sent us, it says you're working out five days a week? Yeah. Okay. It's probably a training problem. Mm. Um, I'm glad you told us you have scoliosis because I would have recommended uh, MAPS Anabolic, but knowing that, MAPS Symmetry yeah. is perfect for you. Your programming is probably off. That's probably what's happening. You're, you're not sending the right muscle building signal. Either you're overtraining or not being effective. And so those excess calories are just going to body fat. So what I would do is I would have you switch to something like map symmetry and I would cut your calories a little bit. I'd bring them down to maybe 2,400 calories and then take it from there. See if your strength goes up and how your body progresses. By the way, how are you testing your body fat percentage? How do you know it went from 16 to 24? Well, I have like my own scale at home. I know they're not like super accurate. Um, I've heard at least, but yeah, I do that. Okay. Are you consistent yeah. with the time that you, you use that at and that you're not fed first thing in the morning? Yeah, that's what I do when I wake up. Okay. Okay, okay good. Yeah. So th th it's, I mean, it's accurate enough to tell you you went in the direction you don't want to go. So that's, you know, it, this is almost certainly a, a train. What does your training look like? You say five days a week. Do you have a, a type of training like that you tend to train like? Like how would you, how would you classify the way you, you train? Like, um, I used to train a lot, like I'd say to failure. And then I was listening to you guys and you said, it's honestly more beneficial to do like two reps in reserve and stuff. So now I do that and I've noticed like I'm getting stronger in the gym, which as before I was like plateaued for a long time. Um, but now as I'm getting stronger, I'm like getting more body fat percentage, but also I don't notice any weight on my body. When I look at myself, it's just according to the scale. Mm. Wait a minute. Wait, has your has your body weight changed? No, no not at all. Mm. Wait a minute. So so your body weight stayed the same, but your body fat percentage went from sixteen to twenty four, and you got stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh yeah. Some no, that suspect. doesn't make any sense. That makes no sense whatsoever. So it's the bioelectric impedance that's on your scale that you kind of step on, and that's reading you for your, giving you a body fat reading. 
Yeah. Oh no, no. Yeah, no, those no. are that's yeah. way that's something's something's off there. If you're stronger, your body weight is the same, um, mm -hmm. and you've been working out, hitting protein targets, and your and your scale saying you went up well, eight percent body fat while your body weight yeah. stayed the same, which means you lost a ton of muscle at the same time. That does exactly. not make any sense. Have, have you been measuring your your waist and like circumference measurements at all? I did, but I haven't like updated that. So yeah. But she, according to her, she says she doesn't notice that she's gaining any inches. Yeah. So she, I mean, yeah, a lot of this does not add up as it far as um, as you gaining that much body fat percentage. I wouldn't think that you've gained that much at all, especially if you you notice strength, you don't feel like you've put on any body fat, your weight has stayed the same. And we're getting stronger in the gym. I mean, these are all signs you're actually probably doing pretty well. Yeah. So that combined with maybe, you know. Dude, she would have had to uh, gain. She would have had to gain yeah, something like, like off. yeah, like 14 pounds of body fat and lost 14 pounds of muscle. Yeah. yeah. That's not that's not happening. Yeah. There's no way. While you're lifting weights and getting stronger, there's no way. Your measurements I'm, are off. Yeah. And I mean, shifting your training is definitely going to make an impact. So, you know, what, what I guess we're trying to dig into is like, what you tend to lean towards. So was that like a lot of reps you determine whether you're getting stronger or have you gone the like really low reps and like just adding progressively adding weight as like your main focus? Um, for me, I'm usually in like the eight to 10 rep range. And mm -hmm. then I also just like heard of what you guys said. It's better to switch up your rep ranges every like yeah. three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. So now just recently I've been doing like, 12 to 15 to 20 reps right now. Okay. okay so you're going to, you're going to benefit yeah. a lot from symmetry. Yeah. I, symmetry. And yeah, get rid of that and scale. I, if you're going to get your body fat percentage tested, um, I would use, I would have a, co a trainer either test your body fat, do underwater weighing, or here's an easy way to do it. Every two weeks, take a picture of yourself at the same time, wearing the same clothes or whatever, mm -hmm. just for yourself. And then you can adjust it from there and you can see what's going on. But this, it, it does not, there's no way you gained, you know, what is it? 13 pounds of body fat, lost 13 pounds of muscle while getting stronger and working out. That, that and doesn't the make scale any sense. not going and up. And the scale hasn't changed. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So. It actually sounds like you're in a, a, a pretty yeah, dangerous Sounds like you're, you're kicking ass. Yeah. You're doing well. I mean, how do you, how do you feel other than the, the scale telling you that? I mean, how do you feel? I feel good. I just feel like I haven't gained any muscle but it also just could be because I look at myself every day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also yeah. Don't keep also factor this in, right? You are in a surplus, okay? So you you are eating more calories. You're going to be filled out more. Your body's going to hold a little bit more water. And so sometimes because, uh, and you're in a bulk, right? So we're not trying to get lean right now. It may look as if you're not building a bunch of muscle and you don't really notice that until like, let's say we go into a cut. So I would actually stay the course. I think you're doing really good. Follow symmetry. And then, you know, maybe after a, a month or two, we go for, you know, a, cut, a little mini cut. And then I would judge how much muscle I've put on or what I look like based off of that. Because that alone is going to distort what you think right now. You increase your calories by six, 700 calories. I mean, you're, you're definitely holding, holding more water and you've got more carbohydrates in your body. So you, it's going to look different. So Gen Jennifer, give me an example of, of the strength gain that you've, you've experienced. Can, can you give me an exercise of like, like a specific exercise with the weight that you started and then what you're at now? So, um, so hip thrust, maybe I do like before I've been stuck on maybe 245 or 255 around there. Now I can do 315 for seven <laughs> reps. Jennifer, you're kicking ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're throw your scale out the window. Yeah. You're, there's, there, it's totally wrong. That's you, what you've you gained, yeah. You, you know right what happened? There. I'll tell you what happened. You gained muscle and, and lost body fat. It's probably what happened. If your weight is the same on the scale and your strength went up like that, yeah. you're, you've probably done the opposite of what you think. You probably gained muscle and lost body fat. And I think you, and the only reason why you don't really see a huge difference is to the point I was making, you're eating yeah, so many yeah, calories. I bet you if you go on a, you go on a mini cut for like two weeks, I bet you, you would reveal uh, your hard work that you've already, what you've already done. Yeah. And, and the fact that you're so young and you're going in this direction, like you are setting yourself up very well, young lady, this is really yeah. good. 2,600 calories, body weight staying the same. You're getting stronger. Hip thrusting 315 pounds. I mean, pounds. you're, you're, yeah. you're going you're, through a bulk. You're, I mean, be just it's just fine. <laughs> you are yeah. kicking ass. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I, you know, okay. So look, check this out. Aside from having like a more accurate body fat test, you can use circumference measurements. Just make sure you measure the same places. So I like to do upper thigh 
waist, uh, and hips. Those will be the three places that I would test. Um, strength is also an objective measure. And I say objective because we can be, we can really be misleading with ourselves when we look at the reflection in the mirror every single day. And it's subjective. It's not very objective. So weight on the bar or the dumbbells or reps or circumference measurements, so long as you're, you're doing them exactly the same, those are objective and those will tell you you're doing the right thing. But if you're stronger and your weight is the same, you can pretty much get bet that you're, you're trending towards muscle building and fat loss. Also, um, do you think I've been in a surplus too long? Because I've been like really like, I guess you get stuffing my face for like a long time now, maybe like <laughs> over six months. So I'm just like, you know, does it, uh, yeah, does, I, does it feel like you're stuffing your face? Do you feel like you're just like, Oh, I can't eat anymore. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you would, I think you'd benefit from a little mini cut. Yep. Run a little two week cut. Yep. Run a little two week cut, drop back down. And you, what you'll see, I think is I think you're going to see how much, what you've done. Yeah. I think right now you have, you're having what do you a hard think? time. You're down to like 2,100 calories. Yeah. You go come, come down to like 2000, 2100 calories for two weeks. And that's it. Follow follow the programming, and then and then just see how you look, how you feel after that, and then I'd go back to my bulk again. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Yeah. Keep us posted too. I, you know what? I tell you what. Let's uh, let's throw you in the forum. I like having young people that are kicking ass already inside there. It's good yeah. for us. Us old guys. To show, the, show there's some young people that are listening to us. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, my, my kids don't listen to me, but someone else, some other young kid will. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. All right, Jennifer, we're going to put you in the forum too, but we're going to send you map symmetry. Follow that program, okay? Yeah, keep us posted. Thank you so much. You All got right, it. Thanks for calling. Uh, I love, I love, love, love when we get a, a kid, especially a young girl, on the right track uh, at that age. Hell because yeah. this is when shit can go sideways. This mm -hmm. is when... When I train people in their late 20s, early 30s, it's usually around late teens where they go the wrong direction. Then they come see me and there's a lot of damage that we need to recover from. But she's, I mean, 2,600 calories. Yeah, she's so, living in a surplus. And she's comfortable and eating that strength. much. She's comfortable getting stronger. She's focusing on strength. Like, what a phenomenal mindset to be in at that age. Yeah. She's going to set herself up very, very it well. It gives me hope when I hear that stuff. Totally. You know what I'm saying? The generation coming up, doing things like that. Like, you just, that's not, you don't see that. Uh, that you didn't see that that often 20 years ago when no, we, were, we were training people. So that's awesome to see. Our next caller is Tori from Colorado. Hi, Tori. How can we help you? Hi, uh, I'm good. Uh, how are you guys? Good, good. We're doing good. Good. Uh, I'm a new listener. I started listening this last summer, I guess, and just can't get enough. So thanks for all that you do. Thank you. Um, so I finally bought a uh, the New Year's bundle package, or I finally bought a package, and it starts with the anabolic. Um, and a little bit about me, I guess I'm 5'9". Um, I'm a chronic over cardio person. I, I started working out 20 years ago with um, the Body for Life program. Mm. Did you guys ever of course. remember that? Yeah, of course. Oh, we've, we've heard a lot about them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, six days a week. I have literally worked out six days a week for the last 20 years. I fell in love with teaching spin, step aerobics, all that stuff, and always wanted to look like a bodybuilder. But, but now I'm realizing, well, obviously I was doing way too much cardio, mm -hmm. like all the time. So anyway, I've cut that out. I'm not doing any cardio and I started the anabolic. And one of my goals is to build a big butt. I'm, I'm a classic or chronic flat butt person. And I'm a little perplexed on the anabolic. I feel like, um, I don't know, two things. It's only doing one leg exercise I'm doing advanced. So three days a week. And the other one is like the shrugs. I haven't done shrugs like ever. And so I didn't know if I should be substituting that part out for like female figures or not. So I kind of have two parts to this question, I guess. All right. So let's, let's, let's address first, uh, maps anabolic. So maps anabolic is a general muscle building and strength building program. And the lower body exercises include, uh, the, the very various, various, variations of squats and deadlifts. Now you can definitely add hip thrusts in there and you would be totally fine. Shrugs are in there because strengthening the shoulder girdle for, you know, people who are getting into that kind of training and strengthening is important. Nonetheless, if you want to take them out, you totally can. It's not going to do any, it's not going to hurt you. And I would say you could definitely add hip thrust to your program, but there's another piece of this Tori, because I'm going to make a guess here that being a chronic over cardio person. And I worked with a lot of people like you. In fact, you remind me of a lot of the instructors that uh, would work with me in my gyms. 
I'm going to, I'm going to take a guess here that you also are challenged with not eating enough, or you probably dieted or cut a lot. If you want to build a butt along with the right exercises, you got to go on a bulk. You got to really go on a bulk to make that happen. Um, and allow your body fat percentage to even come up a little bit. If you're sub, if you're sub 20% body fat, I would say go on a bulk and let your body fat come up a little bit as well, because that'll feed the muscle growth as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you do think since my goals is to build the, the glute muscles that adding another and what, like adding another, um, leg or butt exercise would be good. And what would that look like? Would it be the four to six, uh, sets one to four reps? I, so it would follow the same, it would follow similar sets and reps as the other exercises in the phase that you're in on the days that you start your workouts with, uh, your, your deadlifts or squats, um, which actually would be every, every foundational day I would start with hip thrusts and then move to those exercises. I, I'm going to, I'm not going to completely disagree, but I like to challenge people to follow the program as laid out first. I think somebody that's coming from lots of cardio, borderline, maybe overtraining on a lot of things would benefit greatly from just following anabolic and trusting the programming through the first round. And that's then add, point. And then the second time you go around, I'm not against maybe adding potential, but many times somebody that has overtrained uh, for most of their life ends up seeing huge benefit by scaling back the total volume in the program. And it may be because butt is your focus, I would put some emphasis on things like priming the glutes before you do the squats, before you do the deadlifts. Like that would be the way that if I was adding anything, I would be like, okay, Tori, before you do squats, we're going to do some floor bridges on the ground. Uh, and I have some YouTube videos that I've done clips of for building your butt. I don't know if you've looked at them or not, but uh, on YouTube, we've done some stuff like that. And I would put some emphasis on that, like just making sure that you're connecting well, the glutes, it's firing well, but actually really following the program the way it's laid out and trying to get strong as hell. Like that's the goal. Let's get strong in all these lifts and, 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 and do the calorie surplus like Sal is saying and, and kind of trust the process. I, I, I believe you'll be surprised by just trusting it. Oh, and, yeah. And I, I, drop the traps. The traps are yeah. like not a big deal if you drop some of the shrugs. Yeah, I just want to kind of piggyback onto what Adam's talking about in terms of like my experience of people who um, have been sort of doing the same type of routine for so long and not really incorporating these compound lifts because of the systemic effect that this provides your body for like a louder, a lot louder signal to build muscle, you may end up actually building a lot more muscle as a result in your legs. And it may not look like the volume of legs is that high, which we get a lot of criticism from that initially from people that uh, haven't gone through the program exclusively as it's laid out. Um, you'd be very surprised. And and this has been the experience of a lot of women, especially going through anabolic. Yeah, if your squats are going up and your deadlifts are going up, your butt is is definitely is most likely going to build along along with that. Both exercises are very glute heavy. So, I mean, I, you know, what Adam and Justin are saying is, is, is on point. Do you know how many calories you're eating a day, Tori? Do you know what your, your, your macros are on calories? I would say around 22 to 23. Okay. And you, you, you're, it sounds like you're guessing, do you track or is this kind of like what you're estimating? Well, I try to track most days. <laughs> okay. So, but then you go out to eat or my husband makes like this hamburger bacon thing and I didn't measure it all out. And so then I just, <laughs> you know, you but I have been trying to increase like in breakfast, you guys said like try to get 40, 50. Yeah. So I'm guessing I do pretty good with protein. Eating is not something that I really lack in. Again, so much cardio. I've I've had the habit of bad eating for years and then just making up for it with cardio kind of thing. Do you know what your body fat question? Do you know what your body fat percentage is at, Tori, real quick? I'm gonna say around 22. It's been a while since I've had it okay. measured. Yeah, I, you, try and be in a surplus while you're doing this and, and and get stronger. If you get stronger and you're in a surplus, you're going to build your butt for sure. I really make sure, too, we're, we're hitting the protein consistently every day. Every day, you know, uh, we're, I don't know if we've if you've got your weight list or your, your weight listed in this question or not, but every day trying to hit the one-to-one -one ratio to where, where your, your current scale is at right now. 
Um, okay. Because even and even when you have those days when you eat out, just at least make that a priority. Maybe you don't know exactly the calories because you went to a restaurant or whatever, but at least be paying attention to how much protein did I get, and and be very consistent with hitting it every day, day in and day out. So that's probably the main thing that I would would stress with the nutrition, uh, and then. Just I, trust the program. I really, I think that you, I think if you follow it all the way through, I think you'll be, you'll be pleasantly surprised at the end of it. Okay. So, and then I just have a question because I did watch those YouTube videos where you say like, um, fire the muscle with those thrusters, the frog thrusters and the yes. single leg. So like, do I just do that one time before I know I'm going to do squats and then I do all my squats or every single set? No, just fire. one, just one time before, unless you're still like, like, so let's say you, you were a client of mine. I get you down. We do some of those frog pumpers or we do some floor bridges and then I take you into squats. And then I, what I'd be asking you as your you, coach afterwards, did you feel that in your, do you feel it in your glutes when you're doing it? And you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I do. Like, okay, good. We're just going to keep going. But if you did a set of your squats and you go, and I still don't feel it in my butt at all, then I'd probably have you get down between sets and do a few of them to feel it again and then go back. So really trying to get you to feel it in the butt. But that's really what the idea of the priming the glutes before you go into those exercises is really just to make sure you feel it. So as long as you're feeling it, and if you can feel it just from doing one or two of those sets before, that's plenty. That's all you, that's all you need. Then, okay. then focus on being strong and adding weight. Okay. Well, and I'm one that suffers. I've thrown out my back, my lower back, probably a good five times from running, childbirth, whatever. So when I actually, when I do squats, sometimes it does kind of hurt. And so I've been hesitant to load a lot of weight um, now and in the past and so forth. So for somebody who suffers with lower back, should I just, you know, kind of don't fight the pain, but still focus on doing lower body or um, squats, just lower the weight or still push that weight as well, much as you can? Anytime we say push the weight, it's always within the context of perfect form and pain-free. So if your back is hurting, I wouldn't add any weight. I would add tension. I would slow down and squeeze more. And make the exercise feel harder, but I wouldn't add weight. But yeah, you know what, Tori? Do you have maps? Uh, do you symmetry, have maps prime or symmetry? Yes, yeah, symmetry. Would um, it might be in that bundle I just bought. I don't know. Okay, if you have prime, start priming uh, your your body according to the to the compass. That should help with your low back. I, I want to do more too. I actually want to give. I want to put you in our forum. I want to put you in our forum, and then what I want you to do for me is I want you to uh, video yourself squatting. And 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 post it in the forum for us and tag us. That way, I can look at what you're what's happening and maybe be able to point something out to you uh, of why you're feeling it in your in your low back, and we can address that. And then we'll be more specific with, you know, is it Maps Prime that will help you more? Is Maps Symmetry going to help you? Is it a small do cue? We need to do corrective exercises for a while. That's right. That's right. Is there or is there a cue that I can give you that will fix the form and technique? So send that uh, or get, get get in that forum as soon as you can for me. Give me a give me a, a shot, a video of you squatting, and then let's go let's go from there, and then we can decide. Yeah. Another alternative, when I have somebody, if we do end up having to do some corrective work, like Justin's saying, you know, sometimes I might sub out back barbell back mm -hmm. squats for like Bulgarian goblets. split, yeah, goblets or yeah. Bulgarian split squat stance, yeah. and and that way we can load it and you and you feel safe and it doesn't hurt your low back. So yeah, there's options. There is definitely options because I really want like. For you to get the benefits of this, and we want to grow our ass, like that's the that's the plan here. And you're coming from the type of training you do for getting load is something I really want to do. That's my goal. And if you're hurting, then I want to figure out why you're hurting and address that, so that we can load the weight up because that's that's where you're going to really see the gains in the butt when when you start to really load uh, the exercises. So yeah. we and do want to. I'm going to guess it's a core issue because you did mention childbirth uh, or or having children. I'm going to guess it has to do with your core, but we'll, we'll know better once we see you squat. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a lot of ankle mobility and I'm kind of wobbly going up. And uh, okay. so, yeah, I probably, even though I think I'm spot on with form, it's maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe that's key. Yeah. yeah. Let us see. And we, we might move you over to symmetry uh, first before we do that. That's what it's starting to sound like to me. So let, let us see before we, we, you know, start throwing too many guesses at you yeah. and making it, making this question worse for you. <laughs> you leave and go yeah. like, well, shit, now I feel like I know less than what I did when I go before. Yeah, I we'll let you in the forum so we can take a look, Tori. <laughs>
Okay. And also my trigger sessions, should I um, focus more on lower body when I do those or no? Just sure, like sure, sure, sure. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. This this would be a great mm-hmm. place since Bud is our focus, you know, doing uh like the frog pumpers and floor bridges. That would be great for trigger sessions. Yep. yep. Yeah. Just get a little pump. Two blocks. Yep. Okay. Very cool. One last question. Creatine. Yep. So um, is this, I've been on and off with that, you know, through the years. And then I feel like I'm good at taking it on my workout days, but not good on my off days. Is it extremely important to take it every day? And, or maybe if I'm in a deficit, it, do I focus on taking it then? I don't know. Creatine you take all the time. It's always got benefit. Um, so it's got cognitive benefit, health benefit, muscle building benefit, indirect fat loss benefits. Um, you want to take it on a, on an everyday basis. Okay. So it doesn't hurt though. If you miss, I mean, no, it's not, like not going to hurt once you, once you get it, you know, the, the, the creatine levels up in the, in the system, but just try to take it every single day, you know, try to find a time during the day that you're going to take it consistently. I mean, the best time to, to take it is post-workout, but if you take it first thing in the morning, every day, you're, you're totally fine. Okay, because the packaging says take it 30 minutes before your workout. Nah, does, don't, don't worry is there about any- that. No. Nah, you know, and, and honestly, with cre- creatine, back to Sal's consistency point, the best time to take it is when you will consistently take it. Yeah. So that doesn't matter when it is. Because yeah. it's it's all about getting the levels up in your system. It's not like the, it, it, like the research supports it's best taken after a workout, but we're talking about splitting hair difference. If I had a choice that you you hit it after your post workout on the days you work out and then you miss it on your off days or you took it every single night or every single morning that's right i would rather that every single night or every single morning you get more benefits from that than you would be making sure you do it every workout but then you miss on your off day so whenever you know you would be consistent about taking it take it during that time and you'll see the most benefits okay so like you get that creatine is something that you guys take every single day, regardless of what's going on. You're a big advocate for that then, or okay. do I really even need it? No, I mean, it, it, you, first off, you don't need it. Yeah. So it's not like, uh, but it's, it's the, it's the most valuable performance supplement on the market. That's it. I mean, aside from like, like essential nutrients, like if you're lacking an essential nutrient, aside from that, uh, creatine has so many benefits. It's not just a muscle building supplement or strength supplement. It's now a well-documented health and wellness supplement. You're going to start seeing it advertised to everybody uh, for all kinds of different reasons. So it's good for you. The only people that need to be careful with creatine uh, supplementation are people with compromised kidney health. So unless you work with a nephrologist that is like watching your diet and your protein intake and like, oh, don't eat that. Don't eat like you're other than that, like everybody should take creatine. Even I even, and I'm I'm not going to say this to everybody else, but I even uh, think it's at some point going to be given to children. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm at my 15 minute mark. Do you have <laughs> time for one more question? Sure. <laughs> Territory. Get okay, your money's sorry, worth, girl. I'm, I'm Get your money's little. worth, girl. Three Pete in here, huh? <laughs> okay. So it's in regards to eating before I work out. So again, for 20 years, I got up, had a cup of black coffee and I do cardio and then, you know, work out. And so I am never hungry in the morning. That's when I go work out is at 5 a.m. Should I really try to get something in my stomach? No, doesn't matter. Mm -mm. No, you're fine. Because I don't feel a difference when I eat versus if I don't eat. Yeah, you're fine. How, How much cardio are you doing right now? Well, right now, zero. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Cause that, that's uh, okay. You work out at 5 a.m. Like you're, yeah, I don't eat, yeah. I don't eat till 9 a.m. And I work out around 6 37 a.m. Yeah, you're good. You're fine. Okay. Awesome. I love that answer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tori. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. I like, uh, I like what you said, Adam. Um, that's, you know, I, I didn't even think of that. That's 100% true. Coming for where, she, where she's coming from. Yeah. Um, I like just getting stronger. She's going to gain yeah. muscle yeah. and adding volume. She's probably already pushing the intensity anyway, knowing her, uh, you know, her, her tendencies. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you went that direction. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I want to see her form. So it'd be really interesting. So I hope she gets in the form. I hope she, uh, posts and tags so we can look and, and solve that issue because the one thing that will hinder her from building and growing her butt is if she can't really load and it doesn't mean we can't slow it down and do isometrics yeah. and do some other things but man uh, this type of person who is you know circuit cardio go 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 type of, man being able to do anabolic and get strong in your squats get strong in your deadlifts yep. which means loading the bar and getting it like that is going to translate to the most gains in her glutes 
So hopefully uh, we can address whatever breakdown in the form or issues that she's having so she can actually feel safe and comfortable loading the bar. Our next caller is Molly from Virginia. Hey, Molly. How can we help you? Guys, so happy to be on right now. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, you got it. Of course. All right. So I guess I'll get into my question. So my question is regarding, it's very bodybuilding-esque. So I'm a personal trainer, love fitness. That's all great. But my wedding is coming up and I don't know much about manipulating all the little tiny variables. So sodium intake or water intake and how that can make you look a little bit fluffier or watery and how to uh, um, properly do sessions leading up into it so that way you don't have any like excess inflammation and look kind of puffy. So I want to basically be an aesthetic goddess on my wedding day. So I'm going to ask you guys <laughs> kind of how I can go about doing that. <laughs> I, love, I love the honesty. Yeah. How long do we have? What's uh, what's our time frame here? So from now we have about four months almost to the day, actually four months in a day. Oh, wow. We can do a lot. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. okay. So are you at the, are you at, uh, are you at the body fat percentage and weight and all that stuff that you want to be at? You're just asking for Not like that right last week. Now. Okay. Yeah, not right now. So I still have about, my guess is about 12 to 13 more pounds to go until I'm at probably the ideal body fat percentage. I'd like to be high teens, low 20s, ideally. And right now I'm 25%. Okay. Now, Molly, before I let Adam, because Adam's, he's he's going to be the best person to answer this because he, he competed in bodybuilding yeah. and he knows how to peak and all that stuff. Before I let him answer, you know, the vast majority of how good someone looks is accomplished way before you do any type of right. carb or sodium manipulation. In fact, that makes almost no difference unless you start to get really lean. So the, the biggest, the biggest, biggest thing is going to be up until then, right? Like getting leaner, doing it the right way, building muscle, sculpting your body. And then the biggest thing is avoiding foods that, you know, cause bloat and inflammation. And you probably know what those foods are for you. That those two things right there will get you ninety eight percent of the way there. The other two percent or one percent uh, is going to be what Adam's going to talk about, which has to do with like water, sodium, and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a just very specific, generic answer that I think will uh, add value. But the main thing is this is what I want you to do. One, I want Doug to put you in the forum if you're not already in there, so you have access to that. Two, awesome. I want I want you to to diet train as as if we're not even thinking about peak week, but getting lean for your wedding day, and then literally the week before you you head into your peak week or wedding week, you let me know where your macros are at right before that, and then we can manipulate them before that final week. Uh, the one thing that I would say to do from now till then, so we have a lot of room to manipulate is keep your sodium up. Uh, if you don't okay. use LMNT, I would just, I would recommend using one to two packets of that, uh, for consistently all the way through that way we keep your sodium high. And that when we do potentially manipulate that, we're not doing it in an unhealthy way. I'm not yeah. asking you to go no sodium and I'm not a fan of that at all. It's it's uh, essential and it's important, and so and you don't need to cut sodium as hard as like everybody everybody thinks. If you train your body to take in high sodium leading into peak week, you can reduce to a normal healthy level, and you will get some of the the uh, the, the the water pooling effect that people want. You kick up some yeah. asparagus in there, and then we manipulate manipulate carbohydrates three or four days leading up to the wedding day and then load you up with carbs that morning of the wedding and you'll achieve mm -hmm. this, you know, you know, bodybuilder trick that you yeah. get. But uh, like Sal said, right. right now is now till then is everything. Like if I, if you uh, slack off for the next month because you have so much time, that will make a greater difference than the best peak week advice I could give you uh, when yeah. we get down to there. So right now is the, is the, is the real challenge. Yeah. And Molly, I want to, you know, also, sure. have you ever been to a bodybuilding or figure <laughs> show? <laughs> have you ever been to any of those I've shows? I've never been to a show in person. You know, I can live vicariously slightly through social media, but that's, that's about it. Okay. Here's why I'm asking you this. Okay. <laughs> Saying because it because the women look terrible. They, they, yeah. they look horrible. <laughs> so here's the deal. Death. When you're on stage and they're judging your physique, they're not looking at your face. Uh, they're looking at your 
muscles and the definition, whatever. If you look at these competitors in the face, they look like they're dying, especially the women. They don't look healthy. So you want to look good in your wedding pictures. If you get mm -hmm. down to like 18% body fat, if you try to get too dry by sucking out too much water out of your body, your skin's going to look bad and you're probably going to yeah. look five years older. Yeah. So you, right. so it's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't approach it with, I would go with like 30% of the aggressiveness that a bodybuilder, I wouldn't even go close to what they do because it's not going to look good. You might have more, a little bit more definition in your biceps and your quads, but you're not going to look healthy. And what you really want to look, you know, on your wedding day, I'm assuming is you want to look healthy and vibrant. So the right. whole like water manipulation, sodium and carb manipulation, you might drop a few pounds of water, but that might, it may, may make you look more tired and less healthy, not mm -hmm. necessarily better. Right. So that was the other thing I didn't tell you. I'm sorry that I should have told you that too, is that keep the sodium high, keep the water high too. So make sure okay. you're, make sure you're drinking a lot of water like right a gallon now. A day, yeah. Yes. Gallon a day. Keep the sodium up all the way through this this entire time, and then when we get to the week before, you can literally hit me up and let me know where. And if you told me where your macros are at, where your water intake is at, and how and you've been consistently doing like the LMNT, like I'm saying, I'd literally just tell you cut out the L, the two packets of LMNT. I would tell you to reduce uh, the water intake. I would tell you to take your carbohydrates down by about fifty percent for the four or five days leading up to the wedding day, and then the morning of, I would carb load you. That's kind of what, that's, okay, a, that's awesome. a generic I, idea of what it would look like. Yeah. Should I play around at all in, within these next four months to see how my body aesthetically responds to like, okay, if I have carbs on this day, what does my body look like the day after? Or if I go low carb, does my body look better? Or is it pretty safe to say that I should just drop carbs no matter what? four to five days before and then load right before. Here's, here's why you should test it out. Not because of how you look, but rather because of how you feel. Some people drop carbs, mm -hmm. carb load, and they get gastro issues. I'm sure you don't want to be bloated or have diarrhea or whatever on the day of your wedding, right? So that's Not why, necessarily. <laughs> yeah, that's why I would test that out is to see how you feel. And I, look, I'm going to like, I'm going to be very clear here. Bodybuilders look terrible. If you see them in person, they look terrible. We look at the pictures of their muscles but I don't think, are you getting married in a Speedo? You know what I mean? Are you going to be flexing? You're going to be up there in a wedding dress. You want to look healthy. You want to have good energy. Bodybuilders are like the walking dead. So are figure competitors and fitness competitors and bikini competitors. They have no energy. You're going to be interacting with people. You'll be up there with your husband. Like, honestly, I would worry zero about peak week. I would worry 100% about just getting leaner up until then. That, yeah. would, be, that would do everything. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the... You you kind of slacking off and not being consistent in the next two or three weeks will make a bigger difference than the far bigger than the best peak week setup yeah. I can I can do for you in that in that week. That doesn't mean that I don't I, I don't appreciate that. I mean, being completely transparent, like I utilize these techniques to go to Vegas, you know, like once I learned how to manipulate this stuff and I knew I was going to be poolside in you know, two or three weeks, like. I knew how yeah. to get, make my body look better when I hit the pool at 9 a.m. Yeah, but like, it wasn't like you know, like competing where you're just no, at the pool and you're no, like, you're no, dizzy. No, <laughs> right. no. And and if I if I wanted to look my best, I, it would be the work that I did leading up to that. Yeah. So that's really where this is going to yeah. be done. But that, that doesn't mean that you can't manipulate and play some of this. And the, and we would, we would play with the carbohydrates. We would play with the water intake. We would play with sodium. But you would not need to do it. And you don't – a lot of bodybuilders don't do this correctly. This is a, this is an area of of you know uh, Lane Norton had dispelled this a long time ago uh, when I first started getting in bodybuilding. In fact, that's how I found Lane was talking about water and sodium manipulation yeah. and how body a lot of bodybuilders do this wrong. A lot of them just they 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 over pull and they put too much stress and emphasis on that. And a lot of times their body responds negatively to it because which of course because your body needs sodium, it needs water. These are important things. So it's a very fine line of how much. You want to fuck with that, it, trying to achieve this look. Many times, you know, guys and girls will do that and end up it, they end up looking, looking worse. worse. Yeah, they look better in the week yeah. before with their with their because your muscles are set, you know, made up of mostly fluid. So you could manipulate everything, draw water out of your body, and look more flat and flabby. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you don't want to pass out up there. Either. Yeah, and, and or dizzy, right? Yeah. So, which, yeah. which is why I want mm -hmm. you just to stay the course and and do what you, and do the things I told you, and then the week before, where you're at would would dictate 
what I told you to do. And I, I wouldn't do something drastic. It would literally, like I said, mm -hmm. just drop the LMNT packets. It would be reducing the carbohydrates mm -hmm. by a certain percentage for a few days leading up. And then the morning of, I would mm -hmm. re refill your body up with some carbohydrates. So it fills those muscle bellies up. That's basically what I would do. I wouldn't want to put too yeah. much emphasis and stress on the sodium and water because it, we could end up, it could end up backfiring. Yeah. Us. Yeah, no, that all sounds good. I guess another way I could have phrased it is like, what should I not do right before the wedding <laughs> to come in looking soft? So it's, so that makes a lot of sense. And I do plan, I mean, I've run pretty hardcore cuts before, and sometimes I end up looking a little bit skinny fat ish, yep, yep. uh, because I do lose some of that muscle fullness. So I started taking creatine. I will add in the sodium. But I guess the goal is to kind of still look uh, lean and toned, if you will, um, in the dress and not have that kind of skinny fat look that sometimes I would get when I get when I lose some weight because Mo I am not going to get shredded. I already know that and I don't want to. Yeah, Molly, don't um, do anything radical too, like the, the, the week before, the days before, because it could affect you negatively. So I would say, you know, get yourself fit, healthy, you know, go, stay the course. And then the week of, I would just avoid foods that are inflammatory. I would eat things that mm -hmm. make you feel good, give you good digestion. That's what's going to make you look the best. It really is because you could, and a lot of competitors do this, they eat in ways to look the most shredded, but those ways make them look the least healthy as well. They end up with really bad skin. If you've ever seen like bikini competitors, look at their skin. They break mm -hmm. out hormone imbalances and yeah, okay, they're shredded, but- they don't look healthy. They don't look good. They don't look like, I'm sure they wouldn't want to look like that on their wedding day. So, so sure. you know, it really, that's, I that would be the thing I would focus on. Like stay hydrated, <clears throat> eat foods that you know affect you well, that you digest well. Don't add anything radical. Don't do something crazy that you think might help because it may affect, it may backfire. What, uh, Molly, what, what program, are you following one of our mass programs yet? I'm not currently. I am doing like a month very modified maps anabolic program and i've kind of spread it out over four days took off some volume so it almost it has the same idea and it's phased very similarly uh, but i'm right towards the end of that and i'm still kind of in a gray area of what i want to do afterwards i've ran maps strong and that's that was a lot of fun but my only complaint is my traps were <laughs> like up towards my ears yeah, yeah. Yeah. and strong the, can do that. which is probably great for all the guys listening or even girls who want large traps. But for me, it was like a little bit too much. Um, so I don't, I would symmetry. probably want to run something. I, I still like full body, but I haven't made a final decision on what I wanted to do afterwards. Or, or, aesthetic. or aesthetic. You want to try yeah, Well, yeah, look, aesthetic. Which, which one do you want? Maps aesthetic or map symmetry? Cause I think both programs would be good for you. So this might help you guys answer this because I'm not really sure. I've looked into MAPS Aesthetic, but I have a pretty busy schedule. Um, and four days a week is a good consistent level for me, but I kind of have other life stressors. So I do try to keep the workouts relatively lower intensity, not in the workouts, but just as an overall feel is I'm not um, hitting volume really, really hard. Uh, just symmetry. because I, I can overtrain relatively easily with other stressors. So that's what kept me away from maps aesthetic because I have heard people say like, yeah. it's a lot of volume it and I don't volume. want to really overtrain. Yeah. I like symmetry then. Yes. We're going to send you symmetry. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate that. I've been really curious about that one too. As a personal trainer, I've wanted to get it to use on my clients. So I'll Excellent. be happy to have it for myself and for them. Thank yes. you. And congratulations Perfect. on your upcoming wedding. Yep. Yep. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a good rest of your right. day. You got good it. I'll tell you guys a story that where this this messed me up. So I had a, a jujitsu tournament, my first tournament coming up that I, I had coming up, and I thought, oh, I've never carb loaded, I've never depleted and loaded. Because <laughs> athletes will do this too, right? Totally. Endurance athletes. So I did, and I did, it was a radical change. I chose foods that I normally don't eat. And I ended up giving myself gastro issues <laughs> the day of the tournament, which obviously, obviously backfired, right? No yeah. pun intended. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but I mean, look, it's, it's funny to, it's funny when someone says, how can I use the techniques bodybuilders use to look better on my wedding day or on this photo shoot, whatever, unless it's like a physique photo shoot, like you're not going to look better. You'll look worse. 
they all look terrible. I, I remember the first time I went to a bodybuilding show and I, it was my buddies and I went backstage and you look at them in the face and they just look like yeah. they're all dead. So it's not a healthy look. Well, everybody's laying down and just <laughs> yeah. hungry. I mean, I, I mean, I get it because I could take right now, uh, like let's say, let's just say I, I ripped my shirt off right now, took a photo of myself with the way I've been eating for the last week, and I could manipulate what's going on in my diet over the next four or five days to make that picture look different, to make yeah. it look better. Mm -hmm. Just by playing with carbohydrates. Yeah, but think about how much you know about I your know, no, body. Well, I mean, she's also a trainer, right? Yeah. She's and and I. It sounds like she's already built. How long good. did it take you though to figure this out for yourself? Like you know, to the gram. Oh yeah, yeah. You no. know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's so different, right? Yeah, and and all the the real work is done before. It, it. She didn't strike me as the average person who asked this question. She sounded like an experienced lifter. She's a trainer herself. She understands she's not trying to get crazy peak week, but hey, I, I know that there are some things that I can do with yeah. water and yeah. salt and carbohydrates to manipulate what does that look like. And really what that looks like is consistency heading in. Like, and not, I don't mean that just because the training and dieting will make the biggest difference, but also knowing, right? Like, so that's why I just gave her generic advice of add two packets of LMNT, keep your water intake up yeah, there, basic. keep your carb carb up there, carbs up there. And then when we go to that week, we we don't dramatically shift all those things. Dropping the LMNT packets, that's not going to be a big deal because she's going to get natural sodium in her diet, so she'll be okay there. Taking her water from a gallon to a half or a quarter, is that's still a lot more water than the average person yeah. takes. She'll be You're totally fine. Providing there. her lever levers to be able to manipulate a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would never go like to a person who's like not dialed in not do it and then be yeah. like hey let's because you know what's going to happen right people are going to listen to this and be like oh that'll do the that'll do the yeah trick it's for me. not the biggest it's like no no, no going down five percent body fat is way way more impactful yeah. than doing any of that yeah. stuff right there and it doesn't make a difference unless you're lean anyway you right. know if you're if you're not sitting at a lean body fat and you manipulate those things it doesn't make that huge of a difference no yeah. our next caller is jordan from canada jordan what's happening how can we help you hi guys how's it going good how are you doing good. I'm good. Thanks. I'm going to go ahead with my question here. Um, I've been training pretty constantly for over a year now. I've gained a lot of muscle weight and uh, I've gained a lot of extra like uh, weight in my lifts and everything, except the bench press. And that's what's frustrating me the most right now. I've tried a lot of different things, different grips, different kind of workouts to uh, adjust to it. Um, and what I've noticed during my bench press is that my triceps usually seem to get fatigued pretty fast before I even feel my chest. And the other thing that I've noticed too is that I feel like my shoulders take a lot of the weight off my bench, so I don't feel it as much. Uh, I seem to have stronger so shoulders, so I don't feel like my chest really has the chance to reach its full potential if it keeps going like this. Okay. I already, it's, I already yeah. see it. Do you see it? Do you yeah. see his uh, examples? You got, you wrote down some examples. You actually incline dumbbell press more than you flat dumbbell press. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, bro. This mm -hmm. is, a, you, have you ever heard us talk about why we use beginner? We, a lot of times we will teach the incline press for beginners more than flat, flat bench press. Have you ever heard us talk about that? Yeah, I've heard you talk about it so quite a bit, actually. The, the reason why we do that is because in the incline bench, it naturally sh sets the shoulder girdle in a, in a more optimal position to maximize using your chest. And so okay. that's why that's wh what I'm going to speculate why you are you're stronger, actually, is because your technique is better on the incline than it is probably on the flat. On the flat, your back is probably flattening out and or your shoulder girdle is slightly rolling forward, which is also right. why you probably feel a lot in your shoulders when you press. And this is a technique a technique. Yeah, your thing. setup is gonna play a big factor into this. Do you want do you want a bigger chest or do you want a bigger bench? Um I'd go with chest. I okay. mean I just all right, yeah. well, you got to press like a bodybuilder then. So th that's why I asked that question. So you definitely want your shoulders retracted, pinned down, okay? But you want your elbows flared out a little bit. And I want you to focus on the action of the chest as you press. Don't worry about the weight. If you want to build your chest, yeah. don't worry about the weight. Worry about the action of the chest through the movement. And what the chest does is it brings the humerus into the center line of the body. So the elbows are going to be a little bit more flared out than what a power lifter would do. 
uh, when they press. Okay, okay? priming is yeah. going to be huge here. Yeah, and deep dips too to, to address your your fatiguing um, triceps. In terms of getting those stronger, is going to play a big factor in that, and also allowing you to to set that uh, shoulder girl in a good position. I'm, I'm searching right yeah. now to see. I know I've done some videos on our Mind Pump TV channel. Do you do you follow the the YouTube Mind Pump TV? Do you follow that that channel? Uh, no, I've seen a couple of clips on it, oh, okay. but I don't follow. Okay, channel. well, do do yourself a favor and go on to the Mind Pump TV channel. Search chest tips or five ways. Here's one right here: five ways to grow your chest, and we break this down pretty well. It's all as an old video, all three of us. Uh, there's a, quite a few videos where we talk about getting yourself in that in that position to really use the chest and i think that uh maps prime would be a, a a great program to send your way and making sure you're doing a good job of priming before you get into your bench press or dumbbell press so that we're we're mm -hmm. activating and using uh the chest more that would be yeah are you following any maps programs right now well, i have maps uh, strength uh i used it for like maybe two months and then after that i just i fell off there I, couldn't keep going. I need to be a bit more disciplined with the programming. I just tend to stick to the stuff that keeps me going back to the gym, you know? Okay. Yeah. I, I would love to see you do, I actually would love to see you do maps power lift and, and give him maps prime and prime before you do the lifts. I know it includes that in, in the program too and follow like power lift. What do you guys think? I mean, that'll get his bench up, but he's yeah. having trouble feeling his chest. So, uh, but it'll definitely get your bench press up. Yeah, I yeah well, I know um, Justin mentioned the dips earlier, mm -hmm. and that's another thing that I found strange. Like, I, I'm, I'm really good at doing dips. Maybe it's because my body weight's not very high, but uh, mm -hmm. and I feel it in my chest in that case. And, like, my chest will – my triceps won't give out before my chest when it comes to dips. Have you, know? you done weighted dips where you, you lower your reps substantially? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do think that. that's the move. Do you do you know, sets of six and to deep, eight? Real deep. Even less four, yeah. you know, get, yep. get, get heavy and load that. Yeah. That'll be, that'll, especially if he never does that. Yeah. Yeah. Lo load the, load yeah. the dips up. That'll really help your lockout too. But so go, I just like get one of those chain belts or something. Yeah. 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 That, that'd be a worthwhile investment for you. I think that's great advice. Right. And then I think taking the, the, uh, movements in prime, uh, for your chest, I think is going to, uh, benefit you the most. So priming before you go into any, bench dumbbell any chest exercise ahead of time is is going to is going to benefit you even if you're right. not following one of our maps programs of course i'd rather see you follow a maps program be consistent but you being consistent going to the gym is even more important than that yeah yeah i seem to stick to the exercises that like i enjoy doing that way i keep going back yep. i have trouble sticking to a program that's for sure yeah that's that's a common issue yep all right man yeah. well thanks for calling in yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. You got right, it, buddy. Right Boy, it was uh, back in the day, it was bench press was the exercise, wasn't it? That was, everybody wanted a bigger bench, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but you know, he said you want to build his chest. And, you know, there is there is a difference between getting a bigger bench press and just trying to build a bigger chest. There's definitely a lot of crossover, but you can get a bigger bench press and not necessarily really activate the chest more. It's because your technique is different. Your leverage is better. Uh, bodybuilders do really good chest, you know, bench presses, right? To try to activate the chest. So, I mean, this to me screams like the classic example of somebody with just, they're letting their shoulders roll forward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, I think he's, it's a whole setup issue. Just yeah. like, yeah, if I could see his technique and how he's applying uh, it to the bench, I think that'd make a big difference. Yeah. Which is why, and I know powerlift is a powerlifting program to increase your bench press, but, but the there, technical aspect. Yeah. There's right. a master class in there that yeah. shows you how to set up for the, I mean, yeah. I just think he would benefit from all those things. Like if you just get in, uh, get under there, like a young guy doing bench press and you don't have like this, you know, sequence of things you do to get ready to get into the bench press, yeah. everything from priming to how you set your arch up to how you retract and depress the shoulders. If he's not doing those steps yeah. and he just gets under there and he does it. And then the shoulders take over the movement. Well, this is why. Yeah. The, the key points that he kind of brought up is that, you know, <laughs> He his shoulders were taking a lot of the brunt of the lift, mm -hmm. and so you know to be able to kind of divert that a lot uh, and, and open up and get your chest to kind of respond more so than your shoulders was is a crucial step. Yep. Yeah, look if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. 
Adam is on Instagram, MindPlumbAdam, and you can find me on Twitter at MindPlumSal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique.